tab over to this screen and I am going to pray that my music works because we had some technical difficulties last week. Here we go, friends. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, but and this guy says my name is long. Yeah, no, you're right. <laughs> that is completely fair. So I had a whole thing planned last week for our party <clears throat> to make their way further north towards the Icewind Dale, wherein they are hoping to get there before or stave off a, uh, a frost giant attack on the quote-unquote city of Bryn Shander. However, due to technical difficulties, I had to spitball some stuff, and we had some players down anyway. So, our heroes, the Champions of the North, had escorted or freed some human refugees from a frost giant attack and set to escort them to uh, Fire Shear and opted to go their separate ways due to some, some difficulties, both technical and fictional. Uh, from there, as I said previously, Guy Gamzellas was an absolute bro and allowed me to give him a warlock dream, wherein he went astrally, so to speak, to the elemental plane of Earth and had some stuff going on with that. Um, one second. Wait. Is that relevant to what I'm saying, Nightfall? No, it's not. Cool, you scared the absolute fuck out of me. Thank you. I'm um, sorry. Cool. Uh, so anyway, I completely forgot what I was gonna say. Anyway, yeah. So we had a we had a warlock dream with Breaking Dawn, where he actually went to the uh, to the pl uh, elemental plane of Earth, and he learned some stuff. And um, yeah, the party basically got their long rest and is set to set out this episode. However. Before that happens, we need to do a scene with Kilio Wolfwalker. I set aside some time for you, Kilio. Okay. And. Mm. In the Sorry. Heaven. You're fine. And. We need to deal with that monster in your head. Yeah, just my. A little bit. Are, are you talking about anxiety or the wolf? Yes. Yes. <laughs> so we 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 get a we get a a splash at the bottom of the screen that says the previous night. We see Mevu and we see Layla. I never remember Silverpelt's yes. first name. Uh, Layla and Mevu. Le Layla and Mevu, uh, and Kilio, uh, sitting around a bonfire with lots of animal carcasses spread around and Kilio to put it bluntly you look like Princess Mononoke right now a little bit um <sighs> covered in animal blood are you wearing a skull on your head um I don't know about the skull I don't okay. know um, I, I do know that, uh, that's a little bit too gentle for this. Yeah, a little bit. There we go. I, I'm trying to think. I don't really know any other good things that would be good for this to do okay. with bones. So I, I think, so have you thought about the ritual or would you like me to just take you there? I would like to hear what you have. Okay, so yeah, so we see Kilio like out in the snow around a big bonfire with some bones strewn through it. And the animal corpses are uh, like arrayed around the fire. Uh, we see like herb smoke in the air, and turn that down just a little bit. We see Kilio like with a bowl of something steaming that she's like waving around and chanting in giant. I feel like, I feel like, okay, so like you can't really see it because of the fur, but she is probably stressed probably. by this ritual. If she wasn't in this, she'd be sweating a mm. lot. Um, It probably sucks 
yeah, you, you've got like ritualistic paintings on over your like semi permanent, uh, like Goliath markings. Uh, you like pick the bowl up like to your lips and like drink it. Uh, we see like your eyes like roll back. Um, I think Kilio like drops the bowl and like grabs her head and sh like screams, which is mingled with the spirit of Orith and Mevu and, and Layla also like howl. Um, we see this like smoke come out of, of Kilio, this like black like smoke just like erupt from Kilio, not like from her mouth and nose, but just like from Kilio writ large in every direction. Like Kilio is a smoke bomb that just went off covered in this like black mist. Um, the mist like rolls away from Kilio, um, consuming the the like animal carcasses I gather around. Kilio was like unconscious on the ground. Um and then like as the the crackle of the fire uh becomes like more or less the only sound we hear here, we see like the black paws of Orith like come into frame as Kilio like passes out. And then you wake up like some time later, um and like rejoin the others for the long rest. What do you think? Yeah, I'm, I, I like that a lot, honestly. So, is there um, anything that you want to do when you wake up? Um. I was actually. Yeah, yeah. Uh, about what time relative to the others do I wake up? It's impossible to tell because it's snowing and you're outside, and it's so always nighttime. I mean, nighttime. like, are the others asleep when I end up waking up Probably. after long rest? I think. That's dependent on how re relative when you wake up compared to Dawn waking up from his. No, you hey, woke I... up. You woke up in the morning, dog. You woke up to last shaking you awake, in the morning. Right. Yeah. Also. Um, dawn everyone else. Also, Kaleo has the dawn color thing. She only has to sleep four hours to be rested. Right. The, you weren't asleep. You passed out. That's fair. Um, if I get up before the others... You... So you're out in the snow and the ritual site, probably... 30 yards from the tent. I'm asking is there if there's anything you do when you first wake oh. up. I look around to the wolves. You've got three wolves, like, huddled around you for warmth. Are you going to be mad at me if I can't speak with animals here? No. I assumed that you uh, were. I would like to, yes. Okay. Uh, they appear to be asleep. I'm gonna try and shake... It doesn't take much. Like, if you shift, yeah. they all wake up. Yeah, like, go to stand. Try yep. to get her feet. Yeah. When, at what point do you can't speak with animals? Um, once I'm at my feet okay. and they're awake. So, they're watching you. You can't speak with animals. They Again, as always, they don't speak right away because they don't know what you yes. did. She, like, breathes out for the record you... you have a hell of a hangover yeah this sucks mm, a little bit. <laughs> for, for her um Aureth, are you okay like sniffs you I think so um It was rash, but proud of you. And like, tilt his head in confusion. This is this is different. Did you carry me? I think. I believe so. Looks around. Or time. This isn't where we fought. Our time, our spirits were one. 
You fell. He looks at you and looks down at himself and looks back at you. And like, it's hard to emote when you're not a humanoid. Yeah. But he does that like, what? Doggy face? Like, uh, for real? Doggo head, doggo head tilt. A little bit, doggo head tilt, a little bit, doggo ear flick. Like what you just said doesn't make sense. When we were fighting the giants, you rushed in to guard the only flank that was unguarded. Nods. And they struck you down. I but you refu You refused to die. I mean, or it like kind of grumbles. It makes like a confused doggy noise. It doesn't it? Doesn't come through in words. It doesn't say anything in words. And I think Mevu says, "What's die, little sister?" It's when we go to Valor home. <laughs> matter of fact, matter of factly, Orith says, "I didn't go." I was Cleo. here. I slept. Woke up here. Paul, like he pauses. You see him like slowly get to his feet, and he does that thing where he like tippy taps all four paws and makes like another confused noise, and he goes, "I don't hurt. I don't." Like, looks at you, like, make this make sense. I don't think she can, because she just did it. There's no a make sense to it. There is, like, yeah, but or like, Aurith clearly remembers getting hit by the fucking giant. But he's like, I'm not in pain. I don't, I don't hurt. Like, I've woken up from hurt before. I don't, this doesn't make sense. The body that took the hit from the giant is not the same one you're in. It sniffs his flank. But I think all three of the wolves sniff Aurith. Mm hmm. They, they look at you like a triple doggo head tilt. It's still you, but. I think, matter of factly, Layla, because Layla's a smart one. Layla says, um. Can you fix all of us, little sister? I believe so. And yourself? She pauses. And I think she thinks for another moment before shaking her head. Mevo says, so we protect you and come back. And Layla says, No fear. I think she thinks for another moment and then nods. They look at each other. And you see them like look at each other and then like they all nod. And then, yeah, Mevu and Aura say no fear at the same time. No fear. If you can bring us back. She nods. In order to bring you back, I will need meat, for example. The stuff we gathered before Orith returned. They nod. Uh, Orith like, makes a confused noise, and Layla says, We will show you. As, as long as I don't go to Valor home, I can call you back here. 
We go together. She nods. We walk with the pack. So... If you are in sight of your wolves... Mm -hmm. They have the brave condition. Oh. What they does that do? Advantage so I can write that against saves that are mind affecting. Okay. It doesn't work on charm, but it works on like fear. It works on like calm emotions. It works on like. Is that gonna work on dragon fear? Yes. Ooh, nightfall. Dragon Ooh. fear. Dragon fear is a much higher DC, but yes. It saves against mind-altering effects, primarily fear. Correct. If you are inside of your wolves, they have the brave condition, because they don't have any Ooh. reason not to believe you. Badass. Yeah, that is awesome. <laughs> oh. Primarily fear. All right, it's added in. It's more other. Okay. So there's a pause. And then Layla, like, makes a doggo noise, but it comes across your spell as. Hmm. And think she looks to them. You. Layla's looking at the tent. I think she, like, turns her attention towards the tent for a moment before looking back to her. Can you fix them? She shakes her head. I'm Are... not bonded to them as I am to you. Are they kin? She nods. Even the bird... <laughs> I'm sorry. I know this is a oh important scene, but fuck that got me. <laughs> I don't know about the bird. Even the but elf. The elf needs the bird, and the elf is kin. Um, you hear, Kilio, you hear, <laughs> you're all being noise. Hey, Aura's back. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> and then you, you, you see a, a bouncy, like, dwarven ram, like, come out of the tent and, and does that, like, four-legged hop move that lambs do. And he's going, Trevor, Trevor, wake up, Aura's back, as he's coming over. Oh, God. <laughs> Adorableness <laughs> ensues. <laughs> I missed you, Aurith. I think Aurith goes to answer, and Popcorn just, like, headbutts him. Not like a ram headbutting someone, but, like, fits his forehead and horns against Aurith's forehead and ears. Yeah. That that's a that's a greeting. Yeah. Um It's the thing cats do. Exactly. Um so Orth can't return like return the comment immediately and he just goes Hello popcorn <laughs> And Popcorn goes He remembers my name and bounces in a little circle. Oh my god. Does he bounce around or does he bounce in place in a circle? Like like in place, like a small dog spinning in a circle. Oh my god, this is fucking adorable. When the edgy <laughs> friend is chosen by the dumbass. <laughs> Giant rams have an end of one. What do you want from me? Like <laughs> Popcorn is a good bean and I love him. He's a good bean, but he's dumb as a box of hammers. Um Popcorn is best bean. He's dumber than a box of hammers. With 
with respect to popcorn, <laughs> you could take you could take that box of hammers and beat someone over the head with it, and they'd still be smarter. Yeah, no, like every person who works with sheep I've ever heard in my entire life are like sheep are adorable. However, cleaning up after them is the worst because they find the most inconvenient places to <laughs> die. Like, oh, <laughs> oh no. <laughs> Uh. <laughs> uh, so yeah so I think about this point uh, Helio you hear from, from the darkness towards the tent you hear oh, and I thought I only had two more to go wow I'm going to cut this bird <laughs> <laughs> and yeah you see, you see the hawk strider like walking out of the darkness slowly and looks you all up and down. Could you celebrate more quietly? Missing out on your beauty sleep, I'm guessing. Yes! Hey. Sorry to inconvenience you. At least you brought the big one back. He's useful for something. Hey, at least a little recognition from someone I don't care about. <laughs> hey, Popcorn goes. Those big things showed up and we ran away. Trevor and me and I did not run. Yes, you did. You were right there with us. I did not run. I retreated with grace. <laughs> right? It was a tactical retreat. <laughs> it was a tactical retreat. You were faster than Trevor and me. <laughs> As is natural. <laughs> yeah, right. He's, yeah, like, he's, like, he's, like, he's you... like equal parts Squillium Fancy Sun and Scar. Oh, God. <laughs> I, I, think, I think his response oh, to that dear. is, yes, if they come after us, you're dying first. A little bit. I'm, I'm sorry, when you say Scar, do you mean that, that dude that someone made a meme about from uh, no, full, full Metal Alchemist? No, I mean, I'm surrounded by idiots. Lion King Scar. Bingo. Oh. The yeah. one that got made into a rug for Hercules. Which, by the way, um, his iconic song, Be Prepared, that's not Scar. That's Ed. What? I believe what? it. The, hy the hyena Ed? A lot uh -huh. of Disney... That's the guy who sings Be Prepared. A lot oh, of his wow. songs aren't sung by their voice actors. He, so. he, well, no, the guy started to sing it. And the part where he goes, you won't get a sniff without me. He killed his throat and he couldn't keep doing the number. And Ed just uh, jumped in and mimicked him perfectly. And they used that cut. Yeah. <laughs> oh my that's God, crazy. that's oh, impressive. Wow. Yeah, it is. It is. That is incredible. Like. Wait. I Damn. never knew it was a different dude, and it was. He just jumped in and mimicked him perfectly and continued the song, and Disney used that cut. That's cool. Yeah. Neat. Anyway. So. Things you learn playing as... D&D, &D. yeah. So anyway, Kelia, what are you doing? I think... Is there any meat left after that? No, it consumed it. No, all of it. Okay. I didn't know if we had gotten extra or anything like that. I mean, you did. The 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 stuff you had laid out was for the for the ritual. Okay. That's fine. Um, what like I had Kilio pass out, but what I was gonna do was like show like the mist go over the the um deer carcasses and like remove like the skin and then grow skin, remove the muscles and grow muscles, etc. Okay. Anyway, um so yeah, so you've still got to speak with animals active. The bird is causing trouble. Trevar is not realizing that or not Trevar. Uh Popcorn is not realizing that he's insulting the bird. The wolves find it amusing. Um what do you do? What do I do? What do you do with a drunken wolf? What do you do with a drunken wolf? Oh my wolf? god. 
Uh, I think. She like. Gestures towards the wolves. If you can manage to behave, they'll protect you as well. You're needed by the elf. Like behave. it or not, he's the one with your food. Sounds to me like the help should learn their place. Yes, you should. Do you know what irony means, by any chance? I believe my staff gave me irony-infused food once for a stomach condition. <laughs> the bird is not much smarter than popcorn. Yeah. That's fair. He's probably the he's smartest got... of the animals, but he's still an animal. No, he's not, because the, the wolves are augmented. Not uh, fair. Dire wolves naturally have an inch of three. Yeah. I thought we established the bird had an inch of four. No, the bird does not have an inch of four. With an inch of four, he can talk. What? Yeah, that's talking in. Uh. Um, so I think Kilio. Like, just kind of shrugs at the bird. Um, so... Kilio, uh, do you yeah. still have the fire going? Yeah, the fire's still going. Okay. Um, Haven't put it out yet. So, all of you are, like, facing the tent, uh, and the bird and Trevar, and you see the bird, like, turn his head slightly to the side, and immediately all three wolves whip around. What do you do? Akilio turns around quickly as well. Okay, uh, there is a... I'm gonna go with a normal-sized wolf. Like, at the edge of the fire, and it does that, like... I'm a, I'm a pupper stalking thing, where it's got, like, got one paw raised. And it's just frozen at the very leading edge of the firelight. Like it's, it's an adult wolf, it's just not a dire wolf. Yeah, it probably came from a little further south. Uh, well, what, wherever it came from, it came from away from your camp. Yeah. It's just looking at the group of you, frozen. Can I help you? It starts when you speak, like it like jumps back, and then, like, Adopts like us like the the downward like submissive posture. And pokes its head like into the the firelight again. It says some um, meat. Oh baby. Looks to Oreth. Looks to actually no. I think she looks to Silverpelt Layla. Mm-hmm. What do you think? Layla sniffs, looks around. I know. Looks back at the wolf. Where's your pack? The wolf looks westward. Towards the sea. No. Oh, sorry, I fucked that up. Eastward. Eastward. And says, um... Larchfoot came. Bro, broke the stone crossing. The stone crossing. From behind you, you hear the bridge. Ah. You know, you never really think about the fact that animals probably use those bridges too. In your fucking canyon, they have to. I, I see. Um, I believe we have, I we had some like some, yeah. Yeah. 
Like, you probably have meat on you. Yeah, I think... She slowly approached them, just kind of... Like, you take a step forward, there. it... Like, you take a step forward, it does that, like, jump back 15 feet thing and spin that dogs do. Yeah. I have some meat I can spare. Spare? On my person. I think she goes to take it out of her bag. Okay. Take it out. Hold your honing piece of meat. The wolf is, like, frozen. She like, slowly like, eats her way over. You could continue to approach. And about 20 feet away, set it on the ground. Okay. And yeah. then back away. Set it on the ground, back away. Wolf, like, comes up to the meat, looks at you, looks at the meat. Like, does that, like, stand over the meat, watch you thing? Yeah. And he says, Fine. She nods. Yes. Looks down. Nods slowly. Grabs it and just bolts to the east. And I think uh Mevu from your from your right says, um The crossing is gone. It can't go home. You're right. But I don't know what we can do for it aside from turn around and Pop -pop -pop make a bridge. Says, Pop says, it could run on the ice. And Oren says, no. The ice is weak. Sm he stops and he looks at you and, like, raises his ears and tail. And he says, like, I think, like, in a slightly more panicked tone, he says, The ice is bad! The ice is... That's where he was running. Fuck. Okay, it's, it's your moving time. I mean, no, it's not moving time. Like, any of your wolves can outpace this guy. Yeah, okay. Layla Already gone You say Layla Like a streak of silver Yep Figured There you go Send mom wolf Send the smart one So hey, This popcorn goes Bye Layla <laughs> <laughs> She's nice Is she coming back <laughs> yeah, That's exactly what he says Thank you Oh. Yes. <laughs> yes, she will. What do we do, little sister? Uh, I think that was Layla's voice. We, no, the main voice. Remember Layla had the same voice. Okay. There's not much we can do. Aside from wait for Layla to return. And then what? We can't, we can't afford to go back and make a crossing for them. I don't think we have the time. <laughs> Mevu makes a thoughtful noise, just like, hmm. Yes. Usually I hear Layla making that noise. Mm, Mevu nods. <laughs> and she turns to like the west and like looks out into the snow, looks back at you. And she says, What about us? And before you say anything, she says, Not us, like us. The... The small ones. He nods. And Orith says, The ones attacked? And Mevu nods.
maybe they need a little brother? Hmm. We have a little sister. Saint. Kayo pauses and thought for a moment before. <sighs> Those humans will fuck that wolf up. Uh, depends. They will fuck that wolf up unless, like, Mevu or Layla or Aura goes with it. And if they have a note, then. Maybe not. It, 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 like, then it's just a matter of the wolf needs to learn English. Or common. Yeah. Uh. Like, they will fuck that wolf up unless you can get word to Jonah. Right to note, give it to one of your dogs. Yeah, that, that's an idea. Anyone have the message spell? <laughs> right. Yeah. Uh, I think we would need sending for this one. They're already out of range so you're uh, you're you're thinking about it uh you see a green flash of light from the tent like bright like like somebody let off a flash bang but it was green what what the what and I think it's like rushes over. Okay, so you and the the four animals like rush over. Um, you see everybody is asleep. Uh, you guys had a hard day. It's reasonable. Uh, everybody's asleep. You see um, probably Firga like sitting by the door of the tent, like sitting up, like dozing. Um, you see Dawn floating about four feet off the ground on his back. And there's this like green like aura around him, and he's doing that like magician's assistant thing where his arms are like slack. What? The... Out of character. I don't want to wake him up. Good. Don't 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 corrupt the timeline, please. Yeah, I'm not. I'm. I've seen the void. I know that he needs to sleep through the entirety of this. Thank you. So I'm trying to figure out what to do here. <laughs> so you're like, what the fuck? And you go to like, wake Firka up and you hear the crunch of snow behind you and you turn your head and Layla's coming back with the wolf in tow. So now you have a choice to make. Does he seem like he's in imminent danger? No. It seems like he's an extra in the exorcist, but other than that, no, he's fine. Okay. And then after a moment, she pulls away from the ten and goes to walk back towards where Layla was. Right. Um the the bird and and popcorn stay like at the tent, but but Orif and and Miv go with you. So you you come up to Layla, and and as you come up, Layla's saying like, uh, like to, like to the wolf, she's saying like, um, they might be small, but they're smart. They'll know a way across. Like reassuring him. I feel so bad. I mean, you know a way across. There's just no guarantees they won't be injured if you ask someone to throw it. Mm. And then, yeah, like, Layla, like, looks up at you and, and like, nods. And says, um... You were right, Arth. Arth nods. Unfortunately... For the time being, we don't have the time to turn around. However, mm. 
Mm -hmm. Ghost up had a thought. I don't know a hundred percent if it will work, but it's better than your chances of leaping the river or crossing that ice. The wolves are listening attentively. There are... People. Further along the trail. If you are willing... to cooperate with them... Can they talk? Not in the same way I can to you. Will they shoot? I'm going to send one of my wolves with you. They know them. They know, so to speak, my wolves. My threat, my pack. Or it steps forward a little bit. And then, was... and then stops and like looks back at you and he goes wait not me I fell we may fall but we can always get back up again he nods and he says do they know The humans he nods. Shoots their head. The right. Ghost up like sidles oh. up on your other side. I think she shakes her head at Ghost up. You're white as the snow. If you sneak up on them. They will most certainly attack without thinking. I think the best person for this is Silverpelt. Layla nods. And like crouches down for you to get on her back. Like they all oh. do it. Like you've 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 seen them. You've all you've seen them yeah. do this several times. Like how far ahead did those humans go? Uh, like how long ago did they leave? I know how fast they can move, but how long ago did they leave? They did not stop to rest for the night like you guys did. They kept going. Okay. The odds of them being at fire shear by now are very low. Or how far past the mountain range do you think? Uh, compared to Kilio fucking Wolfwalker, not very. <laughs> Would I be able to get to them and come back and still long rest? Uh, I need that long rest, man. No, I don't I need it health wise, but I need the spell slots. I completely get that. Um, so. This is my answer to that. I don't know. I can do some math. Does Kilio care? I don't believe Kilio does care. Yeah, see, that, that that's where I'm thinking. Like, Kilio is not above asking for extra time to sleep if Kilio needs it. Yeah, that's fair. All right. I think she goes to get on Silver Pelt. Okay, so if you get on Silver Pelt, then Orith just, like, Orith goes, All of us? Shakes her head. The <laughs> others fell asleep. Someone needs to keep watch. 
they nod. Uh, and they both, like, move back toward the tent. As you and Layla and the wolf, the, the little wolf, start, like, running across the snow, it does not take you long at all to find uh, the, the human camp. Uh, they're moving with torches out. Uh, they're sluggish. They're less laden, but also less mobile than they were before. You probably find them in an hour. Um, you you cross the the crossroads like the crossroads like turn right to go to the dale turn left to go to fire shear like you cross that um, but not much beyond that you probably you probably find them um, it probably takes less than an hour at her speed no probably because oh, nice. they've been traveling for eight ah um so my question is do do you have like a torch out I, you don't need one per se. Um, um, I think she would spot them before they spot absolutely. her. Absolutely, but like, do you do you do a way to like make yeah, sure? Yeah, I think once she gets in range, she lights a torch. Okay, so so you you light a torch, uh, and you're you're running along, and I think um, yeah, like Jonah is the only one who can defend the caravan, so I think a, a very sleepy looking Jonah, like rides out on a different horse it's not um it's not his old horse um rides out on a different horse he's got the sword he's got a shield that he didn't have the last time you saw him um and he just like points the sword like through the darkness toward your torch uh, and he raises his voice and he says you there not following the road state your business it's me Kilia Wolfwalker of Clan Roche. Rick looks behind him, lowers his sword. Something happened. She shakes her head. Yeah, you, you like step into the torchlight, and like the the little wolf doesn't. It like stays beyond the edge of the torchlight. And it's just all right. Uh, nice of you to check in, I suppose. Sheathing his sword putting the shield, like, clumsily against the saddle. They were just I... trying to find a good spot to bed down for the night. Morning, I suppose. I hope you, you didn't made... bring word of fire or dragons or some no. such. None of the sort. I apologize for rushing off as soon as the battle was done. You were taken by some spirit I assumed it was for our own good it's nice to see you hail did you lose the other one she shakes her head they are guarding the camp so you're alone uh, that is to say the healer and the the dwarf mother and so on, they're not with you. Be not. It must be important. As you know, I can commune with animals. I've certainly never seen its like, yes. While I was in my watch, I encountered a Particularly brave animal. Well, jo Jonah is listening, but the look on his face is incredulous, like in that, like, what does this have to do with me kind of way? Yeah. I'm, I'm sorry, the. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. How are you making this my problem? Yeah, a little, like, not, not so much, like, not so much, how are you making this my problem? More, my family is dead. The people who are still alive have been traveling through the night. We're all fucking tired. And you said this wasn't an emergency. Like, I'm trying to follow you. I'm trying to care. Yeah. A little bit. It, 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 like, he wants to care. He's just fresh out of give a fuck. Seeing the compassion you have for your animal companions. Animal. 
I'm listening. Lone Wolf. Separated from their pack because of the broken bridge. Came to our camp. If you'll have them, any kin of yours is more than welcome at our camp. We'll fuck with our supplies are low. And like Layla, like while he's talking, Layla like turns her head and like grumbles something, and the wolf steps forward, and Jonah like stops talking, just straight up, just stops, and he goes, uh, "Oh, you meant a real what?" I, <clears throat> of course you did. Um, <laughs> I, it's like, wait a second, this worked way too well for just a moment. Yeah, I'm sorry. No, like, <laughs> like, he thought you were talking about, like, a traveler and just being, like, folksy with your language. He, like, looks at the wolf, he looks at you, he looks at the wolf, he looks at you, and he's like, I... The beast seems healthy wolf walker i does it need medicine beyond what your godly capable traveling companions can i don't understand any of this a wolf without their pack is not destined for much beyond the snow i Yes, that's true. You lost many. And this big creature can help? Given time and care, absolutely. Like looks at the wolf. To say his face is incredulous, skeptical. Um, is a little is a little shy of what it actually is. But you said he, I was driving for an hour. About. Um. I'm gonna have to cast speak with animals again. So so he goes. It is willing to help us rebuild to defend to protect in exchange for care and food I think she like casts speak with animals before saying that bit well, what so bit that, did you say I was distracted by chat sorry um before she casts speak with animals before saying this mm -hmm. is willing to defend and protect in exchange for food and care The wolf nods slowly. And like physically nods, and Jonah like recoils when it when it nods and he looks at you. And you've seen him give you this look before. This is like, I'm not gonna call you a witch to your face, but what the fuck? Um <laughs> Not every day you get to see a wolf nod, and seeing a wolf nod in response to someone being like Just to, to yeah, what's something someone yeah, said just... in common. Yeah, just like yeah, yeah. No, just, take, just take care of them and they'll be your best buddy. And they're and, like, and like yeah, to, maybe to the wolf, he says, "You can speak our tongue." Leo shakes her head, but it just like and he like points at the wolf and just like looks at you like helplessly like, but I just saw it react to you. <laughs> Magic, motherfucker! I, I used a spell. One that's taught by my kind. Can I learn it? With the right practices, you may. You just might. Hmm. It, it takes in, time and dedication. In the meantime, this... Entity... Creature... Wolf... It will... Heed me. I think she gets off of her wolf. Mm -hmm. How close is the small wolf? 
to the her. The small wolf is is at Layla's flank. I think she like she was after Neil because it's a medium creature. Yeah, it's better than you are. Just, yeah. I think she holds out the back of her hand to it. Yeah, he like the the wolf like timidly comes forward. Jonah slowly gets off of his horse. I think to the wolf, she says. It will take time. But eventually. You'll be able to learn to understand. Would you mind to give us a jump start, Wolf Walker? I, I believe so. And I think Jonah, like, he's a farm boy. He's worked with dogs before. Yeah. So I think he, like, points off into the distance and looks at the wolf and he says, There. Did she, is he, like, pointing to a point in the snow? Not so much at a point in the snow, just, like, it's, it's less go there and more look there. And I think she would convey that meaning to them using the speak with animals. Right. Like, you say, that, like that command means. Yeah, so the wolf looks at his, looks at his hand, like sniffs it, and then looks in that direction and nods. And Jonah says, And if I want you to stop, stop making noise, stop attacking something, stop whatever, and points at his feet, and he says, here. I think she conveys that as well. And the wolf, like, drops to its belly and, like, sidles over. And Jonah says, if someone looks like me, and they're in danger, be it fire, a bear, or someone else who looks like me. You have to throw yourself at them and make as much noise as you can. I think she does her best way to convey that as... How do I convey this? Protect the whomever. Oh, so you you so make there's a mechanism for this. Make an animal handling check. Cool. I'm good at these. Yeah, you are. Make sure you're rolling as your characters, all of you. Yeah. Okay. So so you convey it, and the wolf the wolf nods, and Layla looks at Jonah, and says like knowing that Jonah can't understand her, she says, and in exchange, you will heal his wounds, keep him fed and make certain that he's safe when he sleeps. And I will convey every bit of that to, her, to, to Jonah. And Jonah looks at Layla, looks at you, because Layla made noise. And I'm assuming Kilio said that in the same tone she used when translating in the other direction. Yes. And so Jonah says, I will. Does he have a name? He looks to the wall. The wolf can't understand and, Jonah. And literally say, Do you have a name? What's a name? It is a phrase that others refer to you as. Specifically you. I think it makes a howling noise. Like, his like, name like, like, is a woo. Yeah, basically his name is like an enunciated howl. You ever, you ever heard like a coyote make a sound that almost it, it's almost like the the onomatopoeia would be ack? You ever heard like a like a like a coyote yeah. make that noise? Yeah. It's like the husky version of that. Yeah. It's not um, a noise Jonah can make. Yeah. I think she nods understandingly. Unfortunately, the human cannot make that noise. So. They will come up with a phrase to refer to you by in their tongue. And Jonah looks at you when you say that 
and he looks at the wolf and the wolf is like at his feet and he's been like rubbing its side um and he says I need strength and a companion and he looks at you Kilio and he says what do you call a strong man in your tongue what is that phrase uh it's up to you like what, what's it what's a name that sounds strong to you Ooh. I, I got a fucking great one for you if you want it I, I i would like to hear it while i'm thinking of my own go ahead um so you know how like in in norwegian or other like scandinavian languages like literally like bjorn is bear right yeah i think it would be kind of cool if and you can choose you could choose either of these or neither of these if the giant word for strength was either andre or sock <laughs> i love that <laughs> uh, i gotta go with andre okay i gotta go with andre andre he looks down he chuckles he says that's one of our names very well he looks down at the wolf andre and he points off to his other side here I'm, and the wolf i'm i'm, I'm sorry <laughs> but but now you've got me thinking like some languages have have words for stuff that are very specific mm -hmm. and like once you get you have like the specific and then you have the under arcing mm -hmm. and like my mind is immediately going to like strongman andre okay no it, it's the it's the it's, verb it's, for strong right there's it what's the way to describe my thought you know how like some languages are like this thing is this but this thing is the more specific version mm -hmm. like andre st uh, like strength and then tamed strength un un uh, unsaddled strength unsaddled right. is not the right word i know what you mean old. unbridled is the word no yes on yes that is a term but i don't mean like that i mean unleashed it's it's not quite under control yet someone's mm. still learning their strength i i just had a better idea actually like andre is cool but i just had a better idea mm -hmm. zumar oh nice Yes, I actually love that. I love that so much. And that makes sense because Andre gave a fake name. Now I was like, yeah. what's your name? Andre. Okay, where are you from, Andre? What's your what's your last name? And it's the Han Solo thing, and he just went These humans don't care. Zumar. Right? <laughs> like yeah. That's totally what that is. Because no other Goliath that we've met has had a surname like that. They've all had the noun verb surnames. Oh, I so, think a ditch what I was saying because that's actually great. So yeah, let's let's go with Zumar. Yeah, Zumar is great. Yeah, so he goes. So Sandra goes. Zumar, here, and Zumar like goes over to his other side, and Jonah nods. All right. Oh, we have a brother. I'll, um, Sorry. I'll see to his care. Sorry, I had food in my mouth. I was expecting you to go on that for a little bit longer. <laughs> Sorry. You're good. Oh, fuck. Sorry, I meant to mute. You alright? Ah, yeah, I choked on a bit of burger. Mm. So. He's your kin, just as much as the others. He looks at him, and he says, Can you still speak, Wolfwalker? No, it's... This one might be tricky. And he looks at Zumar. I can always and, try. And he says, For now, anyone that looks like me 
you are to be kind to. However, if you feel you can, in time, learn the difference between friend and foe. Hmm. Okay. Okay. Then she kneel next to them. I can actually convey this one. Hmm. Okay. Listen, Zumar. Mm, looks like just, just as you have your pack, and there's another pack that's fighting for your territory. Mm -hmm. All of you wolves are not the same. There's his pack, and then there's not his pack. Try to learn the difference. Zumar looks at him and nods. And be mindful of the small ones. And protect the cubs. <laughs> Zumar, like, does the doggy sigh, and he goes, Cubs. <laughs> Bite. <laughs> Not human cubs, they pull. <laughs> I mean, yeah, but. Oh. Uh, have you met a child? They also bite. They have a tendency think, to yeah. shove things in their mouth. <laughs> I think I think Layla like chuckles, and she says, "These ones are worse. You can't fight back." <laughs> the worst size. And Layla looks at Jonah, and like to you, like to Jonah through you, Layla says, "Keep the small ones away if you can." I mean, she conveys that as well. Jonah looks at the looks at the wolf. He nods slowly. Not so much to protect the children, but because young ones can be hell on an animal companion. He chuckles like, and he nods more more vigorously. He says. I no, Zuma will be a stout guardian, not a nursemaid. And he stands up. And he like gets on his horse and he turns the, the horse back towards wherever he came from. Oh, and he, and he one says, more. He looks back at you. Have a command for follow. I was about to. And he looks at the wolf and he says, Zuma! To me. And she tr translates that to wolf. Yeah, the wolf like, like pops up, and like he glances. The wolf glances at you, Kilio, and he says, "Follow the kick beast." To its side. To its side. A bolts over, and Jonah like nods and says. Be well, Wolfwalker. I'm, I'm terribly sorry. I'm just realizing that that means that this horse has been understanding all of this as well. Yes, actually, that's a very probably, good point. And is probably fucking terrified. <laughs> a little bit, yeah, <laughs> like, probably. Like, jo Jonah, yeah, Jonah, just a little bit. Jo Jonah, kid, come on. I've been watching you grow up. Don't do this to me. Don't, don't. Come on. That's a wolf, buddy. That's a wolf. Come on, kid. That's a wolf. I could have been animal companion than that thing has, and I've been with you your whole life. Yeah, right. Well, no, th this isn't Dawn. This is a different horse. Oh, yeah, that's right. Actually. Mhm. Mm Are you kidding me? I got reassigned, and now I've got to deal with a fucking wolf. Oh. <laughs> so, so yeah. So Jonah, like, be well, Wolf Walker, and goes to to leave. The the horse probably can't talk because it's got a bit in its mouth. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Gillian's <laughs> <laughs> just kind of been drowning it out the whole time. Pretty yeah. much. So, so they go, and and Layla, like as the spell starts to fade, uh, Layla says, "That's going to be difficult." She nods. He shows promise. Hmm. Come on. It's late. It is. I'm tired. So, get back on Layla, ride back out into the snow. And yeah, we crossfade to you getting back 
about when Lash is, like, shaking Dawn awake. So they have that whole scene, and then you come in with Layla. Actually, you come in with all of them, because the other two were outside. No, Everybody's Kilo's awake, you just had the thing with Dawn, and then Kilio drags herself in, looking exhausted. Oh, good. Little sister, we were starting to get worried about you. You are super quiet. I do not know why. Are you leaning back? No. Let me move the mic closer to my face. Is your door open? No. I don't think, like, it's. it sounds like it's coming through a different mic. Is it? Shouldn't be. If Stop I turn his volume TV. up, it's fine. I'll just We're... speak a little closer to the mic, then. Like, that didn't change anything. That's the Did weird part. No. Weird. So, regardless, you guys are all chilling. I enjoyed that a lot. I'm sorry. No, you... That's what it's for, friend. So yeah, so you guys are all together in the in the, the tour camp. Oratha's back. Uh, Dawn, you just got woken up. You found out you had the thing on your chest. Irithyr gave you all of that information about the plane of Earth. And that's where we're going to pick it up. Like So from there, the story continues no more. And Rignac, correct me if I'm wrong, you said, there you are, little sister. We were getting worried about you. Yes. Cool. I had... <sighs> To bring back my friend. That's something you can do? I mean, Oroth is standing right there. It's... It's taxing. But I... Oh, Kilio. I didn't know you... Just... Wow. <laughs> Uh, welcome back, Orth. Orth looks over when you say his name. Trust me, we had quite the conversation. He's happy to be back. The bird makes a, like a squark sound from the corner. <laughs> Shut it up, bird. <laughs> <laughs> we don't uh, we don't even have to know what he's saying to know exactly what he's saying You're right <laughs> exhausted I'm... Yeah, it doesn't look like he slept at all we're going to have to postpone departing I can't waypoint wait sorry not waypoint wayfind like this all right. Well, lucky for you, we're back on the ten trail. You're small enough. You could nap in the saddle. Ah, all right. I may not know much about this, but the ten trail is one that I travel a lot. Providing snow doesn't blind us on the road... It's difficult to lose your way. Huh. What's up, Vader? That was Irithyr making that noise. Mm. What is it, Diviner? No, blind me. Oh. You know what? That's fair. <laughs> fair dues. Fair dues. Oh, hi, oh, hello, I return. Sorry about that. Welcome back. What did I miss? The Everybody's awake and just, like, reconnoitering. I see. There's a problem with that. Hmm. I can't long rest wearing my armor. Mm. True. So don't wear your armor. Wear a okay. blanket. Or a blanket. Like, yeah. yeah, wear a blanket, snuggle up on the ghost step, and if things get bad, ghost step just stealths out. Alright. Wear the all important Ama quill. Quilt. Yeah, right. 
tiny little bundled up little sister. If you feel comfortable setting out, I don't see why we can't. And it sounds like we have a plan. All right. How many days out from uh, the town do you think it is from here? Depending, ask, depending ask your how thing. fast we go. It knows the exact distance. It knows how fast we can move. You know what? That's fair. <laughs> hey, Scout. Tap, tap. Oh. It doesn't have the cup. I, I, I... <laughs> they do. Both of you to assume that I don't have the cup. I'm sorry, what was that, Bard? Both of you to assume that I don't have the cup. <laughs> fair news. You, you activate it. I was reading a thing. That's why I didn't catch that right away. <laughs> uh, so yeah, the, the little, like, orb, like, lights up, floats out of the gauntlet. Uh, SC0U71, right, uh, activating, processing. Preliminary data indicates that we are not under attack. Can I help you? Yeah, uh, what we're moving, I don't know how fast out of character, and we're heading towards Bryn Shander. Can you figure out how, how many days before we can get there? Bryn Shander? Processing. Query, what is I the Bryn Shander? The location I gave you the distance to while we were in the, the gold place. Processing. Error. And it, like, sparks and, like, grinds for a second. That's mm. disconcerting. A little bit. Warning. Detecting magical anomaly of power greater than severity 4. Hey, that we do not have a frame of reference for that. What? Identify what the severities measure as. Severity 1. Normal background magical radiation due to the weave and the constant state of flux of the goddess of magic. Severity 2. Active spellcraft, such as a battlefield, a beholder's lair, or dragon breath. Severity 3. A... I'm, I'm, I'm trying to think. He doesn't pause. A demiplane of magical origin, such as a wizard's sanctuary, or... Plane of portal. Severity four. Uh, let's see. Rampant chaos or astral bleed. That doesn't sound good. Uh, what is this uh, scan indicating us? A uh, little arrow pops up on the top of the scout, and it points towards the north, the northwest. Oh, lovely. Yeah. Do you mean... Hey, there's not much northwest of us. No, not... doesn't seem to be. Wait. I'm, I'm sorry. What what direction you say it's pointing? Northwest. Uh, Wasn't that di the direction that the that's... stone pointed me? No, the stone pointed no. you east by northeast. East by northeast. Sorry. I... So and more like whereabouts towards that. Towards Iron Mask. moving ice. In that direction. In this this general area. Okay. So the dale. We are currently here. More or less. Okay. Um, so it the dale is directly north. It's this way. No, the dale is not quite directly north of you yet. That's that's, that's north. That looks north to me. 
but okay. Uh, I mean, we're on the trail. If you tilt your head like the trail is, <clears throat> like the trail is straight, then the dale would be northwest. It's not how northwest works. No, that's how northwest works. No, that's northwest stays constant no matter what direction you turn. No, 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 no. Oh my god. Okay. If you want to go more specific, you can always break it down to north northwest or west northwest, or even go into deg degrees if you want to. Yeah. Okay. Uh. So we're going this way. We're going northeast. Mhm. Mm mhm. Mm what well, that was northwest it's towards Iron Master and the Sea of Moving Ice. Isn't that where or or like the fucking frost goddess fell in this area? Supposedly. More or less. But <sighs> Alright, I guess we gotta get moving. Wait. Yeah. What category would a god's direct influence be? Query. Please designate God. Are all the Frost Maiden? Greater than Category 4. And this fits neatly into Category 4. No, he said greater than Category 4. Yeah, the, 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 the anomaly. Active. Yeah, the anomaly that's being measured currently. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. We can at least tell that this isn't. Oral's work. Well, no. not directly, at least. Right. Can you tell at all uh, what the source of this might be, or is it just a uh, indistinct shrug? Unknown. All right. How many categories do you have? Four. Okay. It covers a, it covers a rather wide margin, really. Well, regardless, it's not in the direction that we're going. Is the anomaly moving? Negative. I I'm sorry. I it's not the Richter scale. It's the it's the Van Richten scale. Yes. Oh my God. Ugh. <sighs> Everyone, let's get our things. Hey, let's pack out our things. Let's get moving. It's going to take me a while to get the tent tore down. I'd say the day is wasting, but we all know that's not true. Uh... No. Then the faster we get our stuff out of the tent so you can take it down, the better. Mm. Let's get moving, guys. So yeah, uh, packy packy bag. Okay, oh. so you guys break camp. <laughs> you are a dwarf and you pack a bag. And you're heading, like, to the the ten towns. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Mm -hmm. Uh, so Kilio, you will be able to rest before you guys reach Hundlestone. Okay. Yeah. Do you guys intend to do anything uh, in Hundlestone? What is uh, Hundlestone? That's what I'm getting right now. Uh, resupplying might be in order. Yeah. I can't remember how much critter food we actually have anymore. But bluntly, I may have to... I, I may want to try and get some more supply... Some more uh, healer's kits. That's fine. Yeah. Here's what I want. Trying to reload roll 20 because my music stopped oh, working. Here we go. Do, 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 do. I think it... Hundlestone is the furthest south of all of the ten towns. I don't know if it is part of the ten towns. 
That's disappointing. My music stopped working even though I refreshed the page. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, turn it off, off and on again. Again. I will after I look at my character sheet and see what I need to resupply on. Oh, yeah. there it goes. It came back. Yeah, because I rebooted it. Thank you. Hooray. Did you? It didn't stop Did at all I for me. need anything? Besides maybe like more wizard shit. Kit. I've got a lot. So. I don't know if you can, I don't know if you can, if you'd be able to get wizard shit in a place like this. I mean, they might, they probably they might have, have like a hedge wizard or something. Yeah, they might have a couple of kind of precious stones. You never know. This is true. By the way, like, does, does anyone does does anyone have like <sighs> so I have the... I have some information on the hundred if you guys want it okay, mm -hmm. okay. it is the last bastion between the soft folk and the and the dale it's a mining town and it also serves as like base camp for people braving the dale so somebody comes up from like Luskin or Neverwinter, this is the, like, get your survival gear area. Um, and coming down, people from the Dale come here to, like, get supplies that they couldn't otherwise get, up to and including, like, plants, because <laughs> you don't get a lot of those out in the Dale. Um, so it's, it's, it's a mining town and a trading hub, but it's largely inconsequential. If I have a map of Hundlestone, though, we're going there. Do, 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 do. Um, I do not. So I would. I'll, I would like to see about fully stocking on my rations because the further north we go, the less likely I am so, to find okay. food. Okay, so 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 let's do this. Let's do this. You guys, the point is to go to Hundlestone. Then is what I'm hearing. Yeah. 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 Okay. Cool. That's all I needed. So we're going to go here. Well, well, well. Fox is doing a thing. I'm just gonna put this bluntly as I can. I have 99 copper. Cool. That's it. I can spot you, man. I can spot you. Appreciate it. I can spot you. So you guys like come up the the ten trail. I'm near here, but will he? Yeah. Valid. You guys come up the the the, south, the north trail. Pardon me. Come up from the south. Um, Keith Leo, you rest on the way, so you get you all get your benefits of long rest. And yeah, at about like what would be sunset of this day, you see lights on the horizon. You see a stone walled uh, town, and more to the point, you hear it and smell it before you see it. Hundlestone is very much like a a through stop for people coming and going. You see um, lots of lots of people just like out on the street, milling about, doing whatever and it's immediately apparent a shitload of people came from Bryn Shander, or not Bryn Shander, Icewind Dale and just stopped in Hundlestone. Hundlestone is basically having a, like a, a state fair right now because there's so many people around. Um, there's Jesus. guards out, and by guards I mean, like, militiamen. But you see, like, it's been fortified with people who are dressed like Runyak. Um, there's a line to get into Hundlestone. There are people, uh, less so at this gate, more so at the north gate, uh, people, like, in a queue to get into the city. The gates are closed, and they're letting people in on a case-by-case -case basis. That being said, when a fucking minotaur rolls up, everybody clears the way. <laughs> Andre the Giant, everybody I'm, move. I'm, I'm sorry, is this the good kind of clear the way, or the, oh god, it's a monster? Uh, it is very much, oh god, it's a monster, but they see you traveling with supplies, and so they're not, like, 
kill it, they're just like, oh god, what are you? And then they see <laughs> Kilio, and it's like, oh fuck. Um, uh, like, it's it's the ver it's the very uh, tentative. It's the trademark. Yeah. And then they see the the dwarf and the elephant is like, wait, what? Yeah, I I highly it's recommend very trademark. Oh fuck, it's adventurers. It, it's not quite old. Fuck, it's adventurers. Unless you send Runiak and Firda in first, which you might want to do, then it's very very possibly like. Is that a wreckhead man? Is that a dwarf? Is that a fucking mutt? Okay, they're adventurers. Yep. All right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, let's send the dwarf and the uh, fear guy in first. The dwarf and fear guy. Good job. Yep, no, the dwarf yeah. and fear guy. <laughs> the, the cookie and the Gracie first. They yeah, go okay. first. So, yeah. so, yeah, so uh, these are like, sense, like I said Brunette stone walls. Let's be real. These are probably wood walls now that I think about it. So, like, like a, if you guys have seen. Palisade? Yes. If you guys have seen any. No, not a palisade. Well, yes, there is a palisade. But there's also, like, a, a solid, like, wooden wall. Um, that being said, um, if you guys have seen any depictions of, like, Bree, it looks like that. Hmm. It's a, it's a pretty big town. More so I now. Yes, the trees. But there's tents all around the city. And I think as you guys, like, people are getting out of your way, partially out of fear, but more the fear of adventurers than the fear of monsters. Uh, so you guys can basically walk right up to the wall. And I think um, you get there and you hear a shout uh, in Reghegic. And you hear somebody say, Runyak Eriksson, oh, what's dear. got you so far south? Who is it? Uh, you tell me. He's Clan of the Bear. Um... In Clan of the Bear or Clan of the Elk, your choice, which one? He's just somebody that you know. You can tell me who it is and what your reputation is with him. Uh, I like the idea of him being Clan of Bear. Okay. So he's an old yeah. drinking buddy, then. He is an old drinking buddy. As for name... Let's, let's go to, uh... The names of the champions that I had to get a good name. Yeah, good call. The unused names. Yeah. Yeah. The, the background character number 76. Yeah, right. <laughs> Geez, you made 76 names? Holy shit. Oh. He made more than oh. that. Yeah, I have a lot of them. Also, <laughs> I just found one that it's probably going to be all too all too good for this. Okay. Valgard the Stoic. Valgard? Valgard. V-A-L-G-A-R-D. Valgard the Stoic. Okay. And I think Valgard is like... I can never remember his name. Little 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 boy who lost his wife. Uh, Alrune. Uh, Alrune. I think I think Valgar is Alrune's like uncle. Yeah. So yeah, so so you see you see Valgar the Stoic standing on the wall, and he looks like the dad from How to Train Your Dragon. Oh God! He's a big wide dude with like a like a chocolate colored beard. Um, he's, he's leaning on the, like, he's trying to make a show of it. He's, like, leaning on the wall with one foot. He's got a pint in one hand, and his other hand is just cradling a, a freaking arbalist. Oh, dear God. And he says, This is a motherfucker. Yes, he is. And he's just grinning down at Runyag. He's like, They finally kick you out of the glacier, then. Oh, no. As much as you wish, Valgard. It's a bitty Bert. A little bit. <laughs> Takes a pull and he says, I can't let you in. But I can put in a word. They with you. Aye. What's your business? Mainly a pass through, though we do need more supplies. Pass through where? You're going north? Aye. Why? Rinshan is in trouble. <laughs> Everyone who can hear you chuckles sardonically. Like, no shit. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah. 
<laughs> and he, like, puts the mug down and gets up. But, like, throws his bulk forward and gets up and goes, You're going to do something about it. Aye. Aye, if we can help it. Give us a minute. And picks up the, the arbalist and walks out of sight. You still hear him, though. You hear his footsteps. You hear his, like, ponderous... He's a loud man. Yes, he's a loud man. <laughs> <laughs> and eventually, um, how do I describe this guy? A guardsman. A human guardsman with, like, a pot helm and, like, a halberd and not enough layers of clothes, like, steps out of the gate and he's wearing no. like a, like a like a slightly ill-fitting uniform, and he looks like sleepy, and he looks at you, and he looks at your party, and he doesn't even go for a clipboard. He's got a clipboard like literally on his belt. He doesn't mm. even go go for it, and he just looks at all of you, and he gives you this look like I've seen weirder things today. And he looks at Runyak, and he goes. There's no room at the end, sir. That's fine. We have a tent. Hey, we've been camping anyway. <laughs> Don goes, we have a tent. And just for a second, in a bubble around Don, you feel the air get a little bit thicker as everybody inhales like, holy shit, he can talk. <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> this is going to be a running theme. Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, the, the guardsman, like... You see him, like, twitch when Don speaks, and he nods. And oh, he, like, he thought he was a beast of burden. Yeah, exactly. And he, like, points off, like, around the wall, and he says, You can find a place over there. You're welcome to it. Uh, no rough housing. Uh, no noise after midnight. All right. Uh, God, they're treating us like children. If you need supplies, you can send someone in during daylight hours and pick up supplies. I recommend that you have what you need ready. We're doing a lot of business these days. All right. Seems like it. Why are we not allowed to look for their supplies ourselves? It's not room. You can send someone from your group or one of the guards can assist you, but we can't let all of you in. There's, there's not space. Uh, hold on. And he, like, goes back over to the gate and he says, Move aside, move aside, all of you, back, back. And he pushes open the gates and a bunch of the guards come out with shields. But you see over his head, there's people, like, camping on the streets. Like, it's hard to move around inside. Mm, okay. Mm. It would probably be like the, if anything, like if we could argue it, a couple of the smaller folk could go through, but not Dawn. No. And and he like gestures the guards to close the gate again, and he comes back out and he says, "When you've gotten your supplies, you're welcome to continue round. The pass is open for now. Gods be with you." Whatever gods you want, it's, well, it's not good. Oh, uh, important thing of note. Thumbing back in the direction we came from. The bridge over the river's out. The bridge along the northern means. The northern means, yeah. The hey. bridge on the northern means is out. Looks at you. He nods. I see. We'll we'll stop directing people towards Luskin then. They can't stay here. You'll. Uh, sorry. What clan are you with, little father? Clan Dwemerward, at your service. You'll want to speak to the elder then. I appreciate it. I suppose there's no point offering my services if there's no room to walk. Services. I suppose they could bring people out here. For what? I'm a healer. He gives you a look like 
No, really. <laughs> it is the work of my clan. We lived on the sea of moving ice, and we would save those that found themselves in ill situations and have become well versed with some forms of medicine. Thankfully, we've not got many. Not some cases of frostbite, a lot of hungry, if you can help with that. But, no, for the most part, unless a plague comes through or a fire, we're fine for now. Mm, I don't think I could hunt for all these people. There's a lot of them. There's just out here, there's more people than there was at the moot. Yeah, I don't think I can hunt for all these people. I would need the entirety of Clan Roche for this. Even then. Maybe you can do something to help them stretch what they do have. <laughs> if they're if willing to have the special broth, like that can stretch a little while. These people will but, not drink blood. Exactly. I remember the conversation we had about the, uh, mm -hmm. the caravan. My magics can only do so much, but I can provide some food. You've got we food. Or oh, the we means to get lot. it. You'll want to head up. Uh, what's the inn here called? Give me a second. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, good. It's not listed. Perfect. Uh, you're you're going to want to head over to the court stone. I no. will forever and always be jealous at the speed at which you can create an inn's name. Okay. How fucking dare you? It's a mining town! We all have different things we need to do. We can't do that if we can't go in. Mm. Fair yes. enough. Uh, you'll... Leave your supplies with someone you trust. Leave your beasts out here. We'll escort the little father to the Alders Manor, and the rest of you can go about your business under guard. You understand? Hey. Hey. I'm surprised that worked, but hell yeah. <laughs> Hi. Very well. Though, the he very obviously doesn't want to say beast, but he keeps looking at Dawn. My people are known as the Tor. The Tear will need at least four. And you'll only go where you're directed. Clear? Nice, sir. All right. <laughs> Somebody starts to complain, like, he gets mobbed by some people, and he's like, I, I know! I know! You've all out here in the cold. You're waiting to be let in, but there's not room! These people... They're messengers. And perhaps... And he's looking at you, like, back me up on this. He goes, they can improve things hey, for all of us. If things go well... Let me put it this way, if things go well, you might be able to go back to Berenchander in the Ten Towns. Good people, stand aside. Open the gates! And yeah, the big the big gates open again. Um, the guards, like, come out with the shields. Um, and you see, like, three other guards, like, trying to get people off the street, and it's just not working. It looks like... <sighs> When I say a concert, I don't mean, like, standing shoulder to shoulder, you can't move. I mean a concert like Burning Man, how there's just kind of people everywhere. Yeah. That's, that's what the streets look like. You think they're cobblestone underneath it. I think when we find a spot to put our stuff down, put it down. Who stays with in? your gear? The wolves. Um, <laughs> you they said the beasts have to stay outside. I did say the beasts need to stay outside. 
But don't you think we should leave an actual person? I think you should leave an actual person because the wolves will protect your stuff and then get plugged full of corals when they kill someone. That is entirely fair. Uh... You'll only need like what, hundred and fifty dollars, hundred and fifty gold worth of, and three days, meat? and and like three days. And I'm not really. Do that. That's also how you guys get kicked out. Yeah. Also true. Yeah. Um. I mean, if it's all fine with you guys. Mm -hmm. I'm willing to give Dawn my gold, and I want to sit out here and use my meat to make some more of that broth to try to. Okay, that'll take a sure. while. Um, and it, I, all I want is like if you can manage to find. I have regular arrows. If you can manage to find some special arrows, I would appreciate it. Doubt it, but we'll look. Those will probably be expensive, but we can try. Okay, so the smallest person is staying out and everyone else is going into Hundlestown. Okay. <laughs> so... You, say, uh, that, you say that as if Kilio isn't one of the people that can do the most to a human. No, I completely agree with you. However, it's still ridiculous. Okay, so Don, I'm just going to give you all my gold and 10 plat. Uh, I have 300 gold. Okay. Uh, now would be a good time. Use. Now would be a good time to give any trade goods that you guys want to sell over. Um, how much additional meat did I have? What's on your character Is... sheet, homie? That's not my responsibility. Okay, I have eight rations worth of food. Um. He never gave me a specific amount to how much I had, so. Didn't you take down multiple whole caribou? Yeah. Yes. You, you have quite a bit. I don't know how much. Okay, there's a mechanism for this. You, you just simply roll a deal right here. You have 145 pounds of meat. That's a lot of meat. <laughs> of prime meat, I should specify. Which is funny because that's still not enough to feed the people here. God, no. But that is better that, than nothing, though. That's an ungodly amount, but that's still, you know, not not enough to be helpful. Helpful no. for us, not them. Yeah. That's fine, we're the heroes here. <laughs> you do have some antlers and skins to sell if you want, Helio. So anyway, you guys head into Hundlestone, uh, flanked by guards. Who needs to go where? I didn't realize I was muted. Fuck. Yeah, I was gonna muted. say I, I would like to. I was gonna. I was trying to ask Don if he would be willing to carry this in to sell it. Totally, dude. Just tan that shit right the fuck over. Okay. Uh, uh 120 pounds of it. I'm gonna keep 25 pounds of it. 145 pounds of it, homie. Oh, sorry. Uh, 120 pounds is going in, keeping 25. Okay. And the antlers and skins can go with Don if he's willing to carry those as well. I Can I still carry this much? How how much does? Sorry, I that was almost done. I can carry the meat. Okay. How many antlers and stuff? Eight. Oh, er, sorry, ten. Ten Eight pair, or ten pairs or ten total? Ten total. Um, and, and how they, how much do those weigh? Uh, they're caribou antlers, which are pretty heavy. I don't know offhand, but I'm going to conservatively say eight pounds each. I can carry it. And then five complete pristine caribou hides, 
which are probably like they're raw but they've been cleaned of all meat and they've been dried a bit uh probably another 30 pounds each so 150 pounds for the hides i can carry it there you go i'm not even heavily encumbered nope i'm not even i'm not even over encumbered yep my god dog that powerful build with that large size is extreme holy shit oh yeah it is right it's, it's real big <laughs> i want to know what would happen if dawn and sock got in a wrestling match like pre stripping the bear thing um i i say this it, tentatively it would be close sock would get rocked uh sock got higher strength than dawn that's true, but proportionally, Dawn has a severe advantage. Valid. But now that Sock has the belt, no contest. Yeah, a little bit, yeah. Proportional, um, proportional strength can only do you so much good until someone starts using magic. Yep. So yeah, so who is going where? Uh, I like, need to speak with the Alder, and I would also like to buy a grappling hook. So you're going to the Alder. I'm Here's, sorry. Here's your Runyak and Don. Where are you going? Um, I want to find a store, general store. Or something. Yep, that's fine. By the way, I'm I'm changing the name of the the inn because I just hide a better one. Okay. Oh. Okay. Water from a stone. Nice. Also, I'm sorry, I, I, I see Gracie has also been seeing those Lord of the Ring dwarf comics too. What? What? With the with the with the grappling hook. No? What? Okay. So you're going to the general store, Gracie's going to the Alder, hmm. Runyak and Earth, where are you going? Is there would I be able to get Barrier's tools from the store, or would I need to go to like a smithy? Probably from a smithy. And that's where I'm going. All right. Uh, I doubt I can find a mage in this town, but I'm probably looking for one. A mage? Yeah. Um, I can give you an artificer. I was gonna say he's probably looking for a mage or someone magically knowledgeable. I can give you an artificer. Uh, I don't know if that's what I'm looking for. I was mainly looking to like get <sighs> no, uh, okay, no, and stuff like that. Yeah, I mean I've got a lot of that. So honestly, I'd probably just go with one of the others, probably Runyak. Oh. You don't want to spend time with your best buddy, Dawn? I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Still funny visual image of behemoth of a man and a snow elf of all people walk into a bar. <laughs> no, a behemoth of a man walks into a bar. The snow elf ducks. Yeah. <laughs> the snow elf doesn't need to duck because the bar was so high. Unfortunately, with Dawn's height, you ha kind of have to set the bar high. <laughs> okay. At least he doesn't have to completely duck anymore, now that he's only got one horn. <laughs> yes. Oh my god. Hey, you have an 11th horn to sell. I'm not selling my horn. I don't blame you, but I feel like I had to say it. So... I'm just saying, a uh, tor horn made of your own horn. By the way, how much does my horn even weigh? Oh, god. Um, it's solid. As like the antlers are not solid, but yours is solid. So, I don't know. Tenor. Yeah, there we go. So. Oh. Uh, where? So so. What were you doing in lieu of looking for uh, a spellcaster over there? I was just gonna go along with one of the others, probably Runyak. Okay. So you guys are walking together for a while. Um, and the first place you find is the smithy. 
and the smithy is near the edge of town. Uh, there's, uh, like, two human males, uh, one older, one younger, working at the, the outdoor forge. There's a bunch of people milling around, both, mostly because it's warm. Um, but there's also, like, a line. And, um, as, as Runyak and Irithyr, like, step away from the group to go up there, uh, Runyak, you're bumped into. Oh. Can you make a dexterity saving throw for me, please? Okay. I'm sorry, I said Runyak. I meant Irithyr. Oh. I don't know why I said Runyak when I meant Irithyr. Oh. Uh, disregard that okay. roll. Then. Sorry. Dex save, you said? Yes. Okay, so you are not knocked down as you are impacted bodily by a bundled figure. She is, like, it's a female figure. Um, you can't see her face right away. She is, uh, like, covered up in cloaks uh, instead of furs, which tells you immediately she's from the South. Um... She is uh, about your height, like she's a medium creature, um, but yeah, she just like falls completely into you and you have to like either catch her or let her drop, but you, she doesn't knock you down. Uh, she's dropping. Okay, so she hits the ground and um, her like the, the, the cloak on her head comes off. She's got this like shock of like white blonde hair and uh, you see pointed air, pointed ears and for just a second um, she looks like your granddaughter um, and then you realize that it's not she's not even a snow elf she's a half elf um, and she's like dropped a bunch of like scrolls and stuff she picks them up hurriedly and she's like apologizing and common she's like tell me sorry about and she sees that you're an elf and she just like freezes Now, what are you doing this far north? Like, he says that in Elven. Yeah, I'm not sure she speaks Elvish. Let me check. Uh, primary language of Elves, uh, Half Elves, they do get Elvish. Okay, but she has specific rules, Nightfall. Thank you. Um, which you can absolutely be forgiven for not knowing. Like, that's fine. I'm sorry, I just had a really dumb thought. Uh -huh. I'm gonna... So, my horn is substantial. Yeah? Mm hmm. Oh no, you said there's a significant line, didn't you? I'm gonna, I'm gonna hold that, never mind. Significant line of what? At the, at the smithy. Oh, you and, you and Fierba walked away. Yeah, I was, I was going to, like, before we had gone in, like, offer up the horn to, uh, Runyak and ask... Ask him, like, if he if he wants to, he can sell- he can try selling it, or see what the smithy can do with it. Okay. Sure. So, uh, so you, you say that in Elvish, and she's, like, she's still, like, frozen in, like, that- that half-standing-up position, and she says- she says in, like, what is effectively, like, high school elvish she says um sorry i don't understand you right then i ben what it means half human mm. she, it's the elf's word for half elves and she like stands up and like tucks the scrolls in like the various pouches and stuff that she has on her belt um and you see immediately she's she's a wizard of some description um and she just like bow like gives you a little bow and like turns to leave he switches to common as you practice the art she stops what it's clear you're a mage of some description she turns to look at you and nods. What's got you up in the dale? We're not in the dale yet. Can 
can't get a me. bloody caravan to go up there anyway. Seems my knowledge of the area is lacking. Still, what has you so far north from... Saving the world. As if that's, like, why everyone's here. I'm sorry. You said saving the world. From what? The winter? The cold? The blizzard? This fucking child. How much do you know of it? I know it's not natural. And anything magical can be dispelled. And I've got a plan. That's got his interest. A plan, you say? She nods. I just need to find someone to take me up there. Or go in my stead and get what I need for my experiment. Curious. What is it you need, child? A spirit. A elemental, that is. The cause of the... Well, all of this. You think this to be the... You think this to be the work of a mere elemental? Not one. No. Several. Uh, have you heard of a Schwinger? Have Bless I? You. <laughs> make a uh, make an arcana check. Are they talking close enough to, for Runyak to hear? Yeah, she's Could like I blocking also... the doorway of the smithy. Well, not doorway; they're outside. But yeah. Could Could I have you heard make of a check? Uh, yeah, you can. Sure. Have you heard of a Schminga? Yeah, they sell those Schwinga. at my favorite Indian restaurant. It's like it's like it's like Schwinga or, Sh or Schwinga. I'm not trying to say it. I believe it is Schwinga. Schwinga, okay. All, all I really know is that sounds like some kind of Big Bang Theory catchphrase. It does. I, uh, I know exactly what Fox is talking about. So, so, and a miss. Really so, so, so what these are, in simplest terms, is Kodama. They are spirits associated with... Like, they're nature spirits, but they're associated with civilization, basically. They are... Uh, guardians of lost objects they are again they're kodamas like right these things i remember reading about these for crown and she's right they're mischievous but this is a little bit beyond their ken oh please you honestly think that a colony of Twingas is responsible for this. Yes. It's as good a theory as any other. Oh, you don't hit her with them facts. Do you know how far this Eternal Night spreads? The Icewind Dale? The Sea of Moving Ice? They've got some difficulties in Fire Shear. From what I hear, I, we ran into night uh, three days north of Neverwinter. Wow. Yeah. That's bad. severe. That is bad, yeah. Yeah. Like, we knew this was bad. That's bad. Yeah, that, that's bad. Right. It also All proves right. that she's from Neverwinter, which is not great. <laughs> uh, you're from Neverwinter then And you seem to have a good grasp Of how far it How far it spreads I could hardly call myself a What, what the fuck is a magical researcher called? I'm blanking on the name uh, Sage? No No Arcanophile? Thematic scholar is what I'm thinking of, I think. I could hardly call myself a thematic scholar if I didn't. And you believe that Twingers are capable of this? I see nothing to the contrary. This is a. S 
This is not of the scale of mischievous Fay, young one. Nevertheless, science is about proving that. So I need a Schwinger. I catch one, and then we'll see who's right, hmm? You know what? Fine. And you've just invited her on our journey. Side quest get. Oh no. Good dear. There, there has agreed to the first side quest of many. Oh no. Oh dear. Fine. What? Listen. I'll play along. And I'll show you just how wrong you are. Are you offering to help me? That's what I've said, isn't it? Are you traveling north? Yes. God, Vader, you are too good at this. Right? Well, in that case, and she like reaches into her robes and she pulls out a lit lantern. But it's like blue it's like cyan um, interesting it's got six facets on it it's a it looks like a lighthouse in miniature basically it's got six facets on it around the base and it seems to open from the top um, but it, the light coming out of it is cyan and she just like holds it out to you he'll take it okay she says use that find your swinger bring it back to me simple I'm going to examine this lantern. Make an arcana check. Actually, uh, why don't you use your new uh, tool proficiency that we discussed in the library? Uh, right. Uh, it would still be right. I it haven't would, added those in yet. It would still be your int. You're proficient with them. And these tools allow you to determine if something is suitable for mag magical use. What was the name we agreed on? I don't remember, but it's pinned in the forum. I believe we determined appraiser's tools. That's I, it. I think that was right, yeah. Okay, um, this thing is certainly suitable for magical use. It is constructed very well. It's constructed in that in that that way that things made for wizards by wizards are constructed. Um, it obviously has a magical aura. It is currently enchanted, uh, and it doesn't. Like, when you pick it up, it doesn't slosh with oil. Like, whatever is fueling this thing, it is not, like, an oil fire. And I assume this will help me find one. Well, obviously, it's a lantern of tracking. Oh, All I was right. starting to think she was a genie warlock. Never seen one before. It tracks elementals. Curious. Hmm. Where did you say you were from? Oh, I'm not sure if... Okay, I'll, I'll give her stalwart city of Renlosi Gatil. She just looks at you blankly. And after a moment, realizing that that's a location, she goes, Is that near Waterdeep or... Uh, oh, boy. It's the gateway to the high ice. The what? You haven't even heard of the high ice. I thought that was a common term. You call yourself a scholar, and yet you don't know your geography. She's like, indignantly puts her hands on her hips. I... <clears throat> in my third year. Ah, uh, I see. 
point is, bring me a swinger and I'll give you the bounty. 25 gold pieces. <laughs> All right, then. Like, he just kind of scoffs at that amount. But, you know, he'll do whatever. Okay. So you have a you have a lantern of tracking uh, that you can add to your inventory if you want. She goes, "All right, I'll be here. To find me at the end. Uh, Danica Gray's deal is my name." That is certainly a Ben name. I'll do my best to remember it. Mm-hmm. Now with that, he turns around yeah. back towards where <laughs> Renek is. And she, like, con like, contented with herself. She just, like, walks away humming like she finally got her quest started. Um, so, yeah, like, <laughs> Renek, you were privy to all of that. Right. So, why... Prove her wrong. These young scholars always up again. God, reminds, me such... my, reminds me of myself at a young age. I don't like to remember myself at a young age. <laughs> God, you're a fucking <laughs> elf. Oh that, was a, no, that, that was a direct <laughs> reference from something, and I cannot remember what. That no, was... I just kind of made that up on the fly, but. Nice. That was good. <laughs> that was good. That was brilliant. For for coming up with that on the fly, that's damn good, Vader. As, Holy as shit! Elf you were as a fuck. fucking elf. You were an elf. You are way too fucking good at being an elf. <laughs> <laughs> I'm at the point that now I don't want to try because now there's a standard. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there is, and it's fucking Vader. Holy shit. <laughs> So, yeah. That's supposed to imply something. Yes, it's good. Anyway, moving on. <laughs> he, he took the, that imperialist tone with that statement as well. <laughs> oh, hey. So, yeah, so, so, Rudyak, you're there's like, I don't like thinking about myself at a young age. R right. Anyway. Hey, moving on. <laughs> So what? We use that thing to find a Schwinger, and then what? Bring it back to her, I, I suppose. If they are spirits of nature, then how do you manage to capture one? That's... That's a good question. Hmm? With a stick, a box, <laughs> and some bait. No, that's just how you capture a Gamzee. No! I don't fall for that anymore. <laughs> anymore? So... Yeah, this this time you gotta dig a hole and then put something in it that Gamzee likes, and then he'll find it out eventually. So, uh, bring it. Yes, it's me. You guys are still standing in front of the smithy. I'll figure that out when I get to it. Now, are we going in or not? There's no inn. It's just like an outdoor... Like, you guys have been standing at the counter of the smithy the whole time. There's there's no inn. Like, it's it's literally just like... No. It's the work area with a roof over it and, that, and no Correct. actual walls. Then I rephrase and say, now what exactly was it you needed here? Yeah. Oh. Right. And... Uh... I assume there's someone at this at the counter. Yeah, there's there's two dudes, uh, one older, one younger, like working on orders, and it's like um, the best way I could describe it is like they are shouting to each other and shouting at customers the entire time. It's like business is being conducted around you while you stand here. Ah, uh, the good old fashioned business of the north. Yeah. What? I can't hear you over my uh, occupational hazard. Yeah, what? Pretty much. 
So oh, you're... since you're since you guys are going to the blacksmith anyway, could I have had Firga ask you to pick up a grappling hook while you're there? Totally. Cool. Sure. Although Don is going to a general store. Oh, either works. So when when you're like, so what do we need to get here? Uh, like the younger of the two men goes, like I'm not gonna shout, but he's he's shouting the whole time. He's like, be with you in a second. And yeah, like a, a little bit later, he comes over and he looks like. a pirate to put it simply um like a clean shaven scruffy headed pirate uh big burly arms he's got like a tattoo he's covered in sweat um ah, he's he's got a, a, a like a brown apron on um he looks like yeah a, a pirate is going to say he also looks like a character from the witcher like he looks like that type of dude i i'm sorry so we've encountered another rainier clone no He's way too burly to be Rainier, and he's about 20 years older. And he comes up to you, and he, like, adjusts his mustache, smooths out his apron, and he says, You're a couple of new faces. Not seen you before. For your dress, you're from up that way. And as for your companion, he looks here, there, up and down. Can't say we've ever served an elf here. What can I do for you? looking to acquire a few things all right well we've got limited stock mostly to adventurous sorts and we can make it if you've got the coin or the metal and the time firstly I'm looking for a set of farrier's tools whole set what do you say he said a whole set, whole set. all right Good to get into the trade. Been in the trade. Just can't say that I have my tools on me. He nods. You want to head over to a uh, shop down that way? Uh, so the sign is of a brick oven. Don't ask. It's a converted restaurant. A kin of mine sells all kinds of workman's tools out of it. He'll set you right. Mm, good to know. Secondly, and he's going to reach into his bag and pull out Don's horn. Mm. I want to know either the coin I could get or what you could make of this. Mm. And he holds his hand out for it. He'll give it. He takes it. He looks at it and looks it up and down. And he starts laughing. And he says, What? Break off a bull's horn. This is it's cow horn. It's useless. You sure? Aye. Hey. Right, make some fancy paperweight, and I'll give you ten copper for it. I don't think he'd want ten copper for that. Holds it back out to you. Takes it. I suppose lastly, um, uh, I think she mentioned grappling hook. You got the rope already? I could give you rope. He nods and, like, goes over to, like, a bunch of hanging miscellaneous metal objects and just pulls down a four-pronged grapple hook and, like, holds it up, like, will this do? Hmm. Figa said grappling hook? This is a grappling hook. Sure. Right. Holds it out to you. It's a big, big stonking thing. Um, got four barbed hooks on the end of it. One of those, like, like old movie grappling hooks as opposed to, like, the, the more modern ones. You know what I'm talking about? Mm-hmm. And he holds it out to you. He says, eh. What's the color of your coin, friend? I have coin to spare. Ask your price. Five gold pieces if you got it. That's I, not I think, a, it's not a bad price. It really isn't. I think I think Runyak is because Rune he knows money. He also knows that these people do good business things, mm -hmm. and Runyak likes helping people who do good business things. So he's gonna give him ten gold. Okay, mm. takes it. What denomination is your coin? Out of curiosity. Uh, 
whatever coin he would have from interacting with ten towners. So Dalian, okay. You give him ten coins and he whistles appreciatively. He holds the, the hook out to you. And he says, uh, for that price, I'll get you a second one. No need. Mighty kind of you. Anything for your pointy-eared companion? Looks at here, there. Hmm. I'm trying to think of the way to phrase this. Yeah, totally. While while you are doing that, um, he like pops open like a lock box and like dumps the coin in and closes it again, closes it with a padlock. He keeps the key around his neck. I doubt anything you have would compare to the quality of make I'm used to. <laughs> oh, a challenge then. Get a wager that, friend. What, you think you can compare with the elven steel? I think we've smoked a dwarf or two in our time. Not that much different. All right. Now, if we don't have it, we can make it. And if you're so specific, you've got the coin. Well, I think we can come to an agreement. What do you need? What do I need? That's a good question. A shield. Wizards can't use shields. Don needs a shield. I need my shield fixed. Oof. You know, that's not a bad thought. That's probably something else I should do after I buy my supplies. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, you could challenge them to make the best fucking shield they can make for Dawn. Uh, but they'll make a medium shield. Not if yeah. you tell them it's for a giant. I mean, then they'll jack the price out that wazoo. I mean, yes. I mean, I was going to wager 10 platinum, so. Okay. How much gold did Dawn's original shield cost? He got it for 300? Uh, no. no. My my shield, my current shield, took my entire moot winnings. Mm. Which was how much? 500 and some. Okay. Which, you know, looking at what it looking at the fact that it didn't shatter into smithereens at that explosion mm -hmm. that's a good that 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 was money well paid yeah it was we've got tools armor weapons arrows menja pot menja fence can't oh, promise i'll man. fix your dignity after we trounce you in this wager but whatever you need we've got it <laughs> uh, These guys guy... would get along very well with the Goliaths. Mm. Even got a guy that lives upstairs that could fix your marriage. <laughs> Sorry. Ah, uh, besides the shield, I can't think of anything. I mean, if you want to be an asshole, you could plunk down the, um... The arcane focus that you have, I forget the name of it, and be like, make this book better. <laughs> but that would make you a huge asshole. Yeah. Wait, 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 no. wait, wait, wait Kelia wanted special arrows. Oh, yeah. So, like, mm -hmm. some bodkin arrows, some whistling arrows, some broadhead arrows. I'm sorry, what was that first one you said? Bodkin arrows. Vodka. Yeah. I'm sure I thought are. I thought you said vodka, and I was like, "Listen, we're trying to kill the giants, not get drunk with them." But maybe getting drunk with them is the answer. Uh, well, that's the option no one ever considers. The real treasure was the drinking buddies we made along the way. Anyway, sorry. I got a lot of scenes I need to get through while you guys are here, and we've only got an yeah. hour left. So, like, you're fine, Vader. Take as long as you need, but if you're waiting for them to stop kibitzing, then... Uh, 
<laughs> yeah, I think I'll ask for the shield, honestly. Can you make a shield fit for a giant? It pauses a little bit. As a showpiece, or...? This is the part where you tell them where the horn came from. I'm afraid I'll have to deny that. We need our metal for, well, useful things. Stuff that will be used. It will be used. Where do you think the horn came from? I don't know of any horn giants. I don't know of any giants, period. Well, not Certainly necessarily Certainly you've giant. heard of the tours in the Sea of Moving Ice. Mm. Rubs his chin like he used to have a beard. And he says, Wait. You came in with that large white beast. I. Wait, did he just say white? White fur, yeah, are you not? Yeah, sorry. I just. For some reason, my mind went to ghost step. It's. I'm tired. Are you not white fur? I, I am. Okay. I, I, like if I, I said that a... wrong, I, he would have said like blonde. No, I, I, no. I had a brain fart. His brain went to the other possible thing he could be talking about beast-wise. Hmm. Yes. That's a far cry from a giant, friend. I'm gonna make something for him, I suppose. A bit bigger than average, but far from giant, I'd say. And Irithyr would give him the uh, specifications of the shield he was using. Do you know them? I've seen him use it. Okay, fair. So you start, like, yeah, you start naming this big shield, and he's, like, he goes from incredulous to astonished, and he says, Hi. Hi, we could do that. How long are you staying in town? How long are we? Planning on staying. Probably not long. We could have it in a fortnight. <sighs> then we'll have to claim it on our way back. So be it. For your challenge, how's. <laughs> Hang on. We, were, we weren't planning to come back this way. Right, we were going to cut across the glacier, weren't we? Well, then go we, south. If we deal with the bullshit, we can make a quick detour back down here. Yeah. It wouldn't take us that long to come back down and then... ...spladdle our, 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 our way on, uh... Fortnite was... is, what, two weeks, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well... Yeah. 20 days uh, in Faerun. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because they work off a 10-day calendar. Uh, yeah, 10-day calendar. So he says, Tell you what, friend. Color of your coin the same as his. Uh, my, my denomination would be what they use in the Snow Elf cities. He's asking, like, do you have gold? I've got better than that. He lays down 10 platinum. I'm excited. That pile has nine friends. We'll make your shield. As what? in... 90 platinum or... 100 platinum. 100 platinum. A thousand gold? Mm hmm you know what? Fine. Wait, what? I had over a hundred platinum. Good golly. I'm just amazed that they, that I must call you Leviathir. That Irithir has that kind of money to just throw. I so mean, you, so you count head of a high house. Like... So, so you count out a thousand gold, a hundred platinum. And he looks at it, and he nods. 
And he says, All right. Come back in a fortnight. If we don't deliver, you get this and everything in that box. All right. You've mentioned arrows as part of your stock eye. Hi. Those are in our ranger need a little refresher. We don't have them complete here. We can make the heads if you like. Get an order. We send them off to the oak branch. You know your letters, friend. Hi. He points down a different street. He says, head up that way. Signs on the on the building. Got a symbol of an arrow on the sign. Got all your tracking and hunting needs. Bows, arrows, stout boots, bait, whatever. They don't have right. it. You come back to me. We'll make it for you. Sounds good. He takes the platinum. And he doesn't put it in the lockbox. He like puts it in a bag, ties the bag in a knot, and puts it under the lockbox. And he turns and he says, "Master Kratov." And the old guy looks over and he like explains something in a language that neither of you speak. They're speaking Dalian. No. They're speaking Humanese. And you see him, like, go over to, uh, like, his workstation. He's still, like, keeping an ear out if you need something else. But you see him, like, pull out a bar of, like... Irithyr, make an arcana check. Actually, this wouldn't be... This wouldn't be... Eh, I'll take it. He pulls out a bar of Mithril. Oh. That's amazing, that explains the price. <laughs> and, and unless you guys, unless you guys, unless you guys get my money back. Sorry. I said I dare say I might not get my money back. <laughs> so, <laughs> so if you guys don't have anything else, uh, he goes, "I can help whoever's next." Where yeah. do you two head? I'm heading towards the place I can get my farrier's tools to get okay. the brick oven. So the yeah the <laughs> the shop. So I think we 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 cut over to Firga and Dawn walking through uh, Hundlestone. Dawn, um, like the the guards are like forcing people away from you so that you don't touch them, like bodily, like shoving people aside. I think it's just like, you understand I can't hurt people by merely touching them, right? It would make my profession very hard. I think you speak and all four of the guards like flinch and look at you like, oh, you can talk. <laughs> um. <laughs> and they, yeah, they, they stop shoving people. Um, where are you headed? general store if we can find it yeah, probably you, you, you can kind find of it. a priority the general store has like a bag of flour on the sign uh if you're good you, you keep going dawn um you can't fit through the door homie mm. unless you want to do something relatively undignified which is like oh. get down on your knees and like slide through and then stand up i mean Batter, call, tap, tap, you, tap. Hey, uh, I need some things. You you call that undignified. Dawn probably calls that the way you gotta do it sometimes. I mean, fair. So you, you step in, and the general store is... <laughs> Let me put it this way. It was closed until you opened the door, and it was closed because there's three, like, preteen children, like pushing wagons through and like restocking completely bare shelves and and they see you like push open the door and they just scream um 
which causes the the man behind the counter to like look over and he like pulls out a crossbow uh, and then he sees that you're with the guards and he, he puts it away and like to the kids he's like off you go in the back all of you now and off they go and he says um you uh you here to shop or invade friend come to do business sir trade we're fresh out at the moment uh, taking a run to the counting house and restocking the supplies but uh well perhaps you'd be willing to take some product from me then i have things to sell got no coin at the moment but uh I'll hear you. He he like starts taking the bags off. I feel like he tied the bags to uh, the back end of one of his shoulder pads. Right. Left the smithereens of his shield back there, back with the rest of the stuff, because like not a lot that can be done with that. Right. I have about. 120 pounds of caribou meat. Five, food. Car five caribou hide and ten antlers. Alright, looks over his shoulder. He says, Loris! One of the younger, like, one of the kids, like, pops their head on. He says, Go and get Miss Gretchen! Now! Quick, like! Off he goes. And he says, Alright, you got food? I see that plane. What else you got? I cannot get this voice down, nailed down. Sorry about that. Ah, oh, you're good. Sometimes Maybe it's hard. To, sometimes it's hard to get the voice you you're after. I get you. I know, um, I know what I'm after. I'm just there. It is. There it is. All right. I have ten caribou antlers and ten dried, stripped of meat caribou hide, unprocessed. Got. Deer skin. Mm. Like clears space on the counter and gestures you over. Come on, let, let's have a look. Steps over, takes uh, takes the uh, takes them off slowly, setting them on the yeah. table. He like unrolls them, like whistles appreciatively. Oh, fancy yourself a tracker, do you? Not to me, no. Oh. Courtesy what? of the wolf worker of Clan Roche. Clan Ro Nick looks up at you. Goliath? Yes. Alright. Oh. They want there, there is. Sorry, there is that hesitation because Dawn's still kind of unsure on the disconnect between. <laughs> right. <laughs> Alright. Uh, they want gold or mead or something else entirely gold would be best I assume right this second best I can give you is credit in my store if you want to come back tomorrow afternoon should have some gold by then mm. you said you're restocking correct like gestures at the carts left in the in the aisles, and he nods. That I need to ask. Assuming your credit offer offers as money or product. Product that I carry, I or I can order order away for, though. Shipping's a bit of a, a issue currently with all the people in the street and. The, the gate's closed, but I right, we can send for something. I require healers' kits. Salves and poultices and bandages and the like. Correct. Hi, right, we got a few of those. I am, I am by trade a healer. Right, and it steps around the counter, leaving the the deer hides where they are. He says, uh, "You uh." You with the Brotherhood? Brotherhood? Uh, brotherhood of the fountain or other. Uh, say they can, they can heal the sick without magic. 
they're always after supplies, so I, I, I make a few, uh, make a few up special for them. I've never heard of this group. Oh, you're welcome to take a look. And he pulls out a, a healer's kit, a different from healer's kit that you're used to, and like holds it out to you. Yeah, take it, start like ruffling through the stuff in it. Yeah, um, it's it's the same thing that um, that Doctor Lorelai uses. So these would like actively heal someone instead of just stabilize them. One d six plus your um, plus your modifier healing. This is a rather advanced kit of medicine. Oh, with the price Certainly. tag to match. I would assume so. One of those for two of those hides. One of those for two hide. Mm -hmm. That means I could get two of them and have one hide left. Correct. Now, unless Nightfall has arguments, I'm going to do that. I'm not. I, I'm going to be fair and say I'm not there. Because that is, like, hugely useful if I run out of spells. It does not apply your life cleric feature. Still. That's massively helpful. Healing is healing. What? Healing is healing. Healing is healing. Healing is... Okay. Sorry, the first portion of that cut out for They're, me. They have 10 charges each, so you'd be buying 20 charges. Okay. So he's like, I'll take Damn. two. Damn. And so he nods. And he's just, All right, so that leaves us one of these hides to work with. You hear a door open, um, and the the like, the little kid, Lewis, like, comes in pulling like like an older woman in uh she's wearing she's um, when i say older she's like 60 some she's wearing one of those like cloth um not a not a headscarf like you would see somebody who's like working but like one of those like grandma like doily shower cap things mm, mm -hmm. um and she's got like spectacles on the end of her nose and she's got um like a blue like patterned dress on and and she's like a little bit annoyed at Lewis for like pulling her in, like pulling her through the street and into the, the building. And she she like gets halfway through like what is the meaning of this? And the shopkeep says like, Oh, the customer here says he's got food to barter. And she immediately, like, immediately brightens. Uh and she says, um How much have you got? And what do One, you have? One hundred and twenty pounds of prime caribou meat. He says, uh, the matron here, she runs the, uh, the, the school for the little ones. She's, uh, something of a community leader, not so much of the town, but of, of our little section here. She's making sure that when my stocks run low, that people get fed. And, and she nods at, at the shopkeep, and, and she whispers something to him, and he... Like, he gets, like, the cartoon dollar signs. And he says, um... If you're willing to, uh... Part with, uh... With some of that meat for, for us locals... Well... And looks back at, at her... At, at Miss Gretchen, and she nods. And he says, uh... Name your price. I think... Okay... I, I honestly think Don's been, like, sat on the ground so he can properly look at these people. Right. Without hitting his head on the ceiling. Right. And he's just, he, when he hears that, he just kind of slumps his head down onto his fist, leaning it on his legs. Mm -hmm. <laughs> because now Don doesn't know what to do. <laughs> Don, what's money? <laughs> For Dawn, it is both a moral issue and a mathematic issue. I mean, you could just give them the meat. You also got a dwarf right there. Dwarfs no, are known for their money. No, you don't. Fear just kept walking. Did Fear keep walking? Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Unless you want to wait for her to come back around. Oh. 
Oh, there's the rub off. Uh, if you don't mind me saying so, doesn't seem like you're after coin. While you are correct, I am likely to receive some words of distaste from the Wolfwalker if I return with only product. Well, I told you we ain't we ain't got no coin here. Mm. If you'd come an hour you, earlier, I would have. But do you perchance sell honey? Sorry, friend. I'm fresh out of food stuff. Why I'm buying so high? I see. I've only got about two pounds left, so I was hopeful. I'll buy that from you all the same. Sorry. Can't split with that. I need it for potions. You're an alchemist, then? I would hardly call myself such. Uh I have the means of making basic potions. I got some dried herbs. What do you need? Any of it frost thorn? Aye, frost thorn's a weed. A weed, you say? Aye. Say... 29 charges... 29... What 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 is what quali quantifies as a charge? Is it like a bundle? No, it is. Uh, yeah, it, it, it's a bundle. Uh, it would be about like three or four ounces. Okay. So if I say twenty nine bundles, that'll be twenty nine charges. Uh, give or take, yes. About twenty nine bundles. I don't have that much weed, but I got some. Say so, uh. He like, glances around the shop really quick. Um, the the one of the other little kids behind him like whispers something. And he he nods and he says, "Might be able to scrounge up fifteen. That'll work. Right. Well, that takes care of some of the meat. You said you said it grow. You said it's like a weed. So I it's would not assume like a weed, just... it's a it's a weed." Can't eat it. It's uh, invasive. Sell it for I, fertilizer mostly. I think he like pulls out his pestle. Mm -hmm. If you if you throw some in one of these with a bit of honey, put enough water and time into it, and you can eventually make a basic healing potion. I'll take your word for it, friend. Point being is, I I'm an honest man, and I don't sell them that high, so you've got plenty of credit left for that meat. Mm. Could I, um... Could I interest you in metalwork? Or, uh... You, uh... You know your letters and numbers and how to how to put them together. I do. There's a there's a bookshop, if you care. Is there? He nods. We're all real close knit here. What's good for some of us if is good I... for all of us. So if I offer up this meat to you, you may be able to extend this credit to other businesses. And no mistake. Just depends on what you need. Hmm. I, um... I do got one thing, but, hmm. uh... I'm loath to get rid of it because of what it is. But, uh... Well, it might interest you. I listen. And he, like, goes into the back, and you hear him, like, rummaging around. And he says, Boys, where'd you put it? And back and forth a little bit. Uh, and he comes back out, and he's carrying a fishing pole. It's a collapsible fishing pole. 
um, with like a, an advanced like clockwork reel on it. Looks like dwarven make. Mm. Very pretty. I can't say it's of much use to me, but it is interesting. Well, I, I just thought that, you know, uh, this wolf walker might want to trade. Hmm. What spells did I prepare? I don't know. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Oh, I'm short one. You know what that means I can do. Mm. Doink. Sending. Okay. Oh, no. All right. <laughs> oh. Um. I need 25 words. And it has to be a creature I'm familiar with. I'm pretty familiar with Miss Wolfwalker. Yeah, I would say so. So what do you what do you say to to Miss Wolfwalker? No oh boy. God, I'm typing it out just so I can get the right word count. Cut. I'm curious to see where this goes. I'm also curious um, to see where this goes. Where is this gonna go, Don? So let me let me let me let me I finished typing. I just need to get my number right. Yes. The casting, up sending. Right. You send a short Kilio. message of twenty-five words or less to a creature with which you are familiar. The creature hears the message in its mind, recognizes you as a sender if it knows you, and can answer in like manner immediately. The spell enables one creature with intelligence score of at least one to understand the meaning of your message. You can send the message across any distance or even to other planes of existence. But if the target is on a different plane, then neither is a five percent chance that the message doesn't arrive. Okay. So Kilio, you get this like in your mind and then you hear Don say I'm taking a trade of credit and meat of credit and a fishing pole for the meat the pole is dwarven and the credit sounds to be good across town okay what do you um... say what, what do you say Gilio? sorry is this acceptable That's acceptable. When you come back, I need your help testing this broth I've made. Okay. All right. I'm... So you're taking the fishing pole? Yep. Okay. So he, so he nods, he sets the, sets the pole like reverently on the counter and he goes into the back and he comes back with a big gray tackle box and he sets it beside the pole. And he says, I didn't uh, know there were fishing mechanics in D and D. There isn't. Oh dear. There is now. Yep. <laughs> now then. It's a fox it's... game. Of course, there's fishing me mechanics. Whatever you guys need or, or are interested in, I can put into the game. That's cool. Might take me a bit, but I'll do it. Now this <laughs> will not cover all the credit, correct? Oh no, no indeed. Ooh. I tell you what, I, I, we could give you even more if you had some vegetables. Unfortunately not. I'd, I'd say you've got a good bit. Uh, 
Wherever you think it ahead, and I can send word ahead of you. Could I, pray chance, give the, give. Sorry. I'd like to extend my credit to my allies, so I myself plan to go. Uh, let me think. Let me think. Let me think. Do 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 do. Just uh, give it. Give us a name. Anybody who who uses that name, will uh. We'll have your credit to it runs out. Oh. Uh, Runyak Erikson. Right. Anyone who says it... uh who says Runyak Erikson will will know. And Ru Runyak Erikson Virga Dwamawod Irathir He's an elf. Uh, he realizes that you're listing the people and he just starts writing things down. And I believe Wolfwalker may want to do some business themselves at some point today. Alright. So that's uh, Runyak Erikson, that, that's you then. Uh, no. Fear I, I am Breaking Dawn. So I got, uh, Runyak Erikson, Wolfwalker, Irithir the Elf, Firga Dwimmerwold, and Breaking Dawn. That is correct. You're missing one. She's not here, but you're missing not one. Right, yeah. Sorry. Lash. Um, do, do, do not give an orcish name. Um... Just yeah. let that let that hang. This is humans. Don't give them orcs. Unfortunately, yeah. Oh yeah, that's right. I forgot. I cannot say where my allies will end up going in town. But... Uh, you, your credit ain't good everywhere. Just this neighborhood. Right. Everything from uh. Well, from here. To uh, enter the street that way by the fountain, the one with the uh, with the bowl on it. No offense. And then down the other way to the smithy. Entirely different creature. No offense taken. Oh, you don't mind? What are you? I mean, uh, folk are gonna ask. I feel a bit odd. Saying, uh, expect a cowman to walk in. You're not a cowman, are you? It is not an incorrect assessment, but not nearly accurate. What do I, I say? I am a tall. Is that a... We... Is that, is that a people? It is. I am Breaking Dawn the chief of Hallowstone tribe. Fucking A. Fucking A, right. Okay. Um. So you say that and he blinks a couple times and he goes, You're Hallowstone? I am. Roll Hallow... <clears throat> Are all Allostone, uh, like you? In what manner? Look like you, I mean. They are tall, yes. I, um... You mind to, uh, wait here a minute? Hmm. And he turns and he goes into the back and you hear him go up upstairs uh, he's gone for a while like he's gone long enough for uh for um miss gretchen to like offer to take the meat from you like well have the boys do it right. um and for the boys to like get over their fear and start peppering you with questions 
and uh, like 10 minutes later, you hear a, a footsteps above you and then down the stairs. And he comes back out and he's carrying in both hands, he's carrying a war horn. And he says, um, this mean anything to you? One off the back of his belt. It is a help horn. He drops the one he's holding on the counter and like starts crying. And I, I, th I think Dawn like briefly does that thing where you like reach your hand to someone when they start that. Yeah. And like brings his hand right back because like I don't know how to handle that. And he, he like composes himself after a minute, like big shaky breath. He says, so sorry, I, I don't mean to, to to impose on you. It's just uh, my uh, my ma, bless her, for she passed. That is to say, uh, lived lived a, a long life, full life, uh, longer than she shoulda. In fact, uh, uh, over oversaw. Uh, well, a lot in this town, and in her youth, uh, got caught in a storm, fell into the sea, and when she was rescued, she was blathering about uh, beast men on the ice, if you'll forgive me, and she had, she had this here horn. Later on, when I was around, about, about his height, gestures at one of the kids I asked her about it and all she said was she was rescued by aloe stone we have for many years made our home on the, on the sea of moving ice I well, well, well I'm I'm here today and my boy is besides because of your, your kin. Oh. I, 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 I tell you what, don't, don't, don't worry about the credit. Your, your money's no good here. And, and, and I'll cover whatever you need from, from my kin. It won't be near enough, but you've got my thanks. I think he, he does his, like, little smile. You're the second that I've heard tale of my people's work from. You heading up to the Dale? We are. You'll hear no shortage of them. No shortage, no sir. I think Dawn, like, does that, like, gets down and bow backs up and, like, bows his head to the guy. Mm. I'm honored by your thanks. I'm honored by your tribute to my people. They're, they're not gonna believe it. Boys! And the kids, like, run over and he says, go out, tell everyone, your uncles and aunties, all of them, up and down the street, tell them Allostones come to Undlestone. Off they go. I love these scenes. I'm sorry. I love these scenes so much. Right? They're great. Dawn's. Dawn's influence is so pure. Oh my god. <laughs> I think Dawn, like, looks up at the guy. This half. This, this look, like, half written in marker that of, of pride mm. and half like pure sadness what, whatever you want chieftain anything in those carts anything on those shelves you just take it with my thanks i would you, you, i would you be want, remiss you want your eyes back no 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 I'll... Straighten, straightens himself up. I would be remiss as chieftain if I did not tell you that while I do not know if there is anyone this far north that can come, that horn will always summon aid. It, 
It does. Chieftain, it does. We'll use this horn for town meetings and if there's a, a storm coming or what have you. At, at my mother's wishes. He like kind of wipes his face. I, I'm being, I'm being terrible rude. Uh, Torben's my name. Mikhail Torben. It is wonderful to meet you, Torben. I thank you for your story and for honoring me and my clan with su and my tribe with such praise. I wish I knew their names, but I'll, I'll get these hives to Tanners and Sons, and no mistake. You do with them as you see fit. These, I suppose, I have. Uh... I, I think he like stands sl slightly because he can't really. Yeah. Fo probably fully. I, I think I think uh, Torben like reaches under the counter and he pulls out like a cloth bag with the same like symbol on it that was on the the um the door, and he says mm -hmm. um. Normally, these are, uh, these are for our special customers, and we get them back, you know? Expensive-like, but, uh, I tell you what, Chief, uh, you, you take this, and you fill it up with whatever you want, and, uh, you keep the bag. I think he, like, takes it and looks at Torvin, and says, I'll treasure it. And he picks up the horn. And I should take this back upstairs. If you'll give me a moment. If you wouldn't mind, let me know what you're taking so I can keep my notes abreast. But otherwise, as as you like. And turns to head back upstairs. Um, just to cover my my aces so far. Mm. I've got that those um. You got the two healers kits. You got the fishing the, pole and the tackle box. The tackle box will not fit in the bag. Right, but and, I've got the I've got the charges of Frostthorn, right? Uh, he never got those, but he said you're entitled to them. Right. Okay. I'll get those from him when he comes back. Okay. Um, I should probably take the meat off my. The boys took it. Yeah. So, is it safe to assume Don's looking around the shop? Mm-hmm. You hear the door open behind you. Look. There's, like, a, like an old woman. Um, she's, like, older than Miss Gretchen. Like, she, she has help getting in by one of, like, like one of the town guards, basically. Mm-hmm. Um, and you can tell she, like, insisted. Like, she's not the type of woman who needs to be outside of her house. You can tell she, like, insisted. And she's just, like, looking right at you. And she just starts weeping, like, quietly. I think, like, he did with the old, with the other gentleman. Like, this time, he he's already got the message. He's on his le- he's on, his, on the ground bowing to the woman. And yeah, she, his head. she like shuffles over and it takes her a minute to get over to you and she just like puts her hand on your shoulder and puts her other hand on your cheek and she just like you can tell it's hard for her to stand it's hard for her to speak um, and she just croaks out thank you no no madam thank you for blessing my tribe with the honor of a place in your memory. So, Firga. Yes. You are led uh, through the streets, past the bowl fountain, to uh, it's it's a combination like Lord's Manor, but it's been converted to a city hall. 
So like mm-hmm. the the upper floors, it it it's like the upper floors is still a nice house, but the upper floors is like a house, and like the lower floors is all the, like, you know, political upkeep stuff that a that a a town like this needs. Um, there's a line out the door, and immediately the guard that you're with is like pushing past them. Um, okay. And you hear like as but before you enter the door. There's, like, much commotion, and then they see you, a dwarf in full, like, battle raiment, and they're like, oh, um, and you're led up to the desk, and the, um, the, uh, the, the clerk, a a young man, um, he's voiced by, and I don't remember his name, and I'm very sorry, the actor that plays Draco Malfoy? Oh, that guy. Um... Shoot, what is his name? I'm waiting that for Cookie fucker. to chime in. That fucker. He's not a fucker. He's a sweet boy. Um, Wait, sorry, what? What's the name of, of Draco Malfoy's actor? What? Tom Felton. Tom Felton. Yeah. Like, th- this guy is, is voiced by Tom Felton or somebody imitating Tom Felton, which I can't do. But he says, like, like to the guard, he's like, what's the meaning of this? And then he sees you... And he says, like, to see the elder, then. Hey. And nods, like, gestures you up the stairs. Um, you up the stairs alone. Um, and yeah, th- there's an office, and there's, like, there's a dude uh, at a desk signing papers, feverishly signing papers, trying to get everything out. And the best way that I can describe this man is he's a cross between what so ever springs to your mind if I say the word Burgermeister? Okay. And the Hamburglar. Okay. <laughs> so he's got like messy red hair. Um, he's a portly man. He's covered in sweat despite the cold. Feverishly like stamping and signing papers. His door is open. Um, and you look in and he looks up and he just freezes. Like stamp in one hand, quill in the other. Just freezes. And he goes... Can I help you, little father? Not whatever hey. you do, don't offer the man a pickle. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Uh, I, I'm sorry, I've already forgotten. What's the name of that river? Uh, I don't know the name of the river. The, or uh, the gorge or whatever that landmark the, is called. The road is called the Northern, the Northern Means. The river doesn't have a name on this map. Hey, uh, I was told to speak to the elder about the bridge on the northern means. Uh, it's out. The bridge on the... Hang on, like, pulls out a big book of maps, like, pages through it, and, like, runs his hand down a map in the north, and he goes, Oh, that won't do at all. Hey, that's why I was told to come speak with you. Well, I'm assuming you're the uh, older then. I, I am. I am. Uh, Hundlestone has uh, got a lot of business of late, and uh, I'm barely keeping my head up. Well, unfortunately, I think you've got another complication on your hands, because as I said, the bridge is out. All right, uh, bridge so is anyone... out. These refugees need somewhere to go. Don't suppose you know about the road to fire, sheer. I have no... I have no idea about that one, I'm afraid. We got folks here fleeing the day. What I need is some scout adventurers. Hey, it's funny you mentioned that. Oh? Hey, me and my uh, kin are uh, here. Uh, I'm losing this, the accent. All right, my, fr- uh, my friends and I are here on our way up to Burn Shandor. Got a, got a cadre of dwarven phalanx with you then? Not exactly. No? I think I've saw it. Eh. Uh, well, we've got myself and, uh, Kelly Wolf Walker from Clan Roche and Elder Runyak of the Reghead Men and, out of character, I'm drawing a blank, who else? But just. Oh, it sounds like a group of adventurers, I. Uh, you looking for work? Uh, not work, 
not work specifically, but if you have uh, things that needs doing up in the Ten Towns, we're headed that way anyway. Oh, if you could do something about he just gestures out the window. That <laughs> be lovely. Hey, hey that, that's what we're on our way for. <sighs> you, you, you got a map, you know where you're going. Uh, I personally don't, but uh, Wolfwalker, as I said, is with us, uh, and she's the best tracker I've ever met. She'll find us. She'll find us a uh, way there. Oh, I doubt it. Dale's curse these days. Yeah, but if you had any idea what we went to, what we went through just to get here in the uh, to begin with, I think we can handle it. Oh, I've no doubt. But if you're going. Your next stop should be good mead. Good mead, good mead. Let me get these notes IRL one second. Can I see the map again? Uh, you can just a second. Alright, next stop, good mead. Hey, what's going on there? Couldn't tell you, it's just the southmost town. Oh, I see. Sorry, I thought you meant there was trouble afoot. Aye, there is. There's trouble in all the towns. <laughs> that especially I meant. Aye. Hey, uh, thanks. That's good to know. You you come up the means then, little father. Hey, uh... You know what, I, what did I, it? I personally came all the way up from Gontelgrim, but the... Okay, does she tell the truth or does she lie to Quell Terror? Um... This guy seems like a wuss. Are, are you talking about the whole situation with uh, why we're going this far north? <laughs> no, I mean... Asked him what took out the, he asked what took out the bridge. Ah, um... I mean, I've had a lie prepared this entire day for if someone asked us why we were going this way. And it might work here, too. Go on. There's a group with rather impressive, uh, rather impressive magical means that have been making threats towards the Ten Towns, and we're on our way to deal with it. Or you could just say massive flooding. You could say massive flooding. Uh, yeah, I, I think she'll say, uh, I couldn't tell you what did it exactly, but the whole pl the thing was flooded in itself. Like, the water had risen all the way up past the bridge. Make a deception check with advantage because you're lying by omission. Okay. Survey says. Oh no! <laughs> oh dear! Oh dear! Like, Does anyone have inspiration? Because we might want to give it. Somebody said, "Show me potato salad," and Fierger showed up with beans. <laughs> I don't have inspiration to give. Does anybody else? Not here. No. No. <laughs> They're like. Narrows his eyes at you. He today. says, Vader. "I don't think I, I don't can't think you're after the roll, and yeah. I don't think I. Oh. I don't think you can do them this far out from the other person. That's so he... also true. He can because it's a player mechanic. I'm pretty sure it has to be a creature I can see. Oh, does it? Okay. Yeah. Well, he can see everything. He's a." Divid uh, divination wizard. So, oh my God, I was so, scrying on the party. Sure, but I'm yeah, not. So I think I think he like narrows his eyes at you here again. He goes, "There's no need for that, little fellow. We're on the same team here. I understand you're not the most forthright people, but you come all this way to help. Why stop now?" Well. Bluntly, uh, bluntly older. Uh, I didn't want to scatter anyone. Was it dragons? 
giants. I'll see your point. Just uh, like, yeah, emphatic nod. There we go. A giant broke the bridge then. Hey. You know what kind? Frost. Oof. Bastards still out there. Nay, we took care of them. Well, that's something then. At least. That said, strange, strange things are afoot. So if you send any crews down there to try and fix it, best be on their toes. I, I... What? Why? Uh, Frost giants come around once a generation. This is mine, so dealt with. Honestly, I'm relieved. I... I older. But I said frost giants, plural. You're having me on. No, sir. What? Oh, you... Don't suppose you and your... Your kin willing to, uh... You'll get a functional bridge built. Pay you. Unfortunately, sir, we're heading up to Bryn Chandra to try and fix gestures out the window. <laughs> you see him already writing Adventurers Wanted on a piece of parchment? <laughs> uh, well, I... Uh, well, good luck to you. And thank you for the... For the... They come in here... I come in here, there it is. Uh, no, I don't think you are that a target. Deep sigh of relief. Right, uh... If I saw... Hey. Hey. Uh, if you do get any dwarves on board for, uh, fixing the bridge, uh... Come on, brain, do the thing. <laughs> Any dwarves on board fixing the bridge? Um, just let them know, uh, Fear Good Wemmer Wode, uh, sends the regards. Alright, sure. And you, you turn to go, Fear Guy, and I think that's the last shot of the episode. Alright. Whoo! We did it. We got there. Welcome to Hundlestone, friends. All right. We do uh, it. Welcome to the north. Welcome to the north. Hi. Uh, so let's do some shout outs. Uh, Vader, you want to start us off, friend? Hello, everyone. I am Journeyman Vader. I'm a moderator on Kit's Discord and Twitch and a streamer on Twitch myself. You can find me over on Kit's Discord, on Twitch at twitch.tv slash dreaminvader, or on Twitter at Vader Sidious, and you're a bastard for making me do this with a Sour Patch Kid in my mouth. I didn't know you had a Sour Patch Kid in your mouth! Nightfall, give us a shout out, please. Uh, oh, okay. Ah, uh, and Fox Show. Ah. Uh. I do admin stuff and things. Uh, if you need me, I can be found around the server. Uh, on the Discord. If you're not there, press it. Uh, type exclamation point social into the chat before the bar cuts off the bot. Uh, I'm tired. I can tell. <laughs> <laughs> My outros are not doing good lately. Did you have fun tonight? I did. Thank good. you, Bart, for running. Halfling! Hello, I'm Halfling. Uh, hey, I'm Birchmila, aka Gracie. I do art and things, I play Minecraft, I get into shenanigans, and I love tabletops. So if you like any of those things, give me a poke. Mr. Cookie. Hey, what up? I'm Cookie, also known as the Extinct Bacon on just about every other platform. 
I love a lot of things D&D and tabletop, and if you do too, my DMs are always open. Otherwise, you'll find me lurking in the stream or in the shrine. Well done, Mr. Cookie. Guy Gamzellus, the hero bard, finish us out, please. Good job, Gamzy, you did it. <laughs> Gamzy, you are a muted friend. You can find Gamzy over at these places. He's a good bean. He helps us out with a lot of tabletop stuff. He's cool across the board. I think he's either having audio troubles or got up to pee, and that's completely fine. For my part, as ever, I am the shop eyed Kitsune, the teller of tales and the weaver of mysteries, the masked bard. This is a channel that is devoted to lore and storytelling, world building, role playing, and discussions of those things. So if that's to your fancy, you're an excellent company here, and I do hope that you enjoyed your time with us. You just watched that size of action Voices of the Mountain, a weekly tabletop DD 5th edition double feature of Ri Icewind Dale, Rhyme of the Frostmaiden, and Storm King's Thunder with my own spin on both. This is the end of my dedicated stream week, and we will not have more tabletop goodness for you, unfortunately, until next Tuesday, as I won't be streaming this coming Sunday, because we have Sunday in the afternoon, and we won't be running Tales. But I'll be back on Saturday with more at Yakuza 4 in the afternoon, and we'll see where the evening takes us. For now, I need to get out of here. But as always, I need to leave you with these parting words. From myself, my keepers and those joining me on the stage this evening to all of you, the regulars, the followers, the newcomers, and the lurkers, whether you're just, excuse me, having a seat by the fire or you've got a running tab at the bar, remember, there's always more stories to tell. And hopefully, I'll see you all next time for more Voices of the Mountain and a new chapter. Good night, you guys. Thank you so much for stopping by and hope to see you again very soon.